BGMC. The biblical truth lives here. scriptures foretold of the anointed one, Yeshua HaMashiach. The Messiah Yeshua came to call the people back to the truth of His word and to follow that righteous path. Yeshua then called Jewish men to be His disciples, and after His death and resurrection, those Jewish men told the world about the Jewish Messiah. Now, after 2,000 years, Beth Goyim Messianic Congregation has that same calling of those Jewish men telling all people, both Jew and Gentile, about the proper ancient path, teaching the Route 66 King's Highway from Genesis through to Revelation, and how you need and can get back to the proper roots of the faith and a closer walk with God. Now, let's hear the message. Let's go get let's go get a blessing. Turn to the book of, of Yochanan, John chapter 18. Uh, John chapter 18. Juan 18, por favor. Uh, John chapter 18, verse 28. Verso no, this is the wrong. No, no. Permítame. Okay, John 18, verse 28 through chapter 19, verse 16. Vamos a mirar yeah. a Juan 18, del 28 a del 19, al 19, 16. Let's go on to the next slide, that, that's wrong. Uh, this is a Messianic lesson number 916, a kingdom divided, the fifth column. Y es el mensaje 916, un reino, un reino dividido, la quinta columna. Okay. Messianic lesson number 916, a kingdom divided, the fifth column. Let's go on to the next slide. Everything you hear now will be in English and in Spanish. We're going to read a lot of God's word today. The Lord gave me this incredible lesson. So, we're going to read a lot of God's Word. I'm only going to read it in English. Okay, that'll give you a chance to read it in whatever language you wish to read it in. Going on to the next, next slide, we'll have a synopsis and one big lesson. I'm going to read in English, and Rabbi Yehoshua will read it in Spanish. Synopsis. Get ready for a deep dive today into the Word and into history. Matthew 25, verse 25. However, knowing what they were thinking, Yeshua said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and every city or household divided against itself will not survive. These words Yeshua spoke are extraordinarily profound. They are as important today as they were 2,000 years ago. The enemy of Elohim has been hard at work with his plan since at minimum 1963. Now his plan is almost complete. Get ready to take, a lot, take lots of notes today as we dive deep, as we dive into history and his story. Espanol. <laughs> Hoy prepárate para una inmersión profunda en la palabra y en la, y en la historia, en Mateo 12.25. Sin embargo, sabiendo lo que estaban pensando, Yeshua les dijo, todo reino dividido contra sí mismo se arruinará. Y toda ciudad en, o casa dividida contra sí mismo no sobrevivirá. Estas palabras que dijo Yeshua, son extraordinariamente profundas, son tan importantes hoy como lo fueron hace dos mil años. El enemigo de Elohim ha estado trabajando duro con su plan desde, eh, desde los años 1963 como mínimo. Ahora su plan está casi 
completo. Prepárate para tomar muchas notas hoy mientras nos sumergimos en la historia y en su historia. They're saying there's an now one person is saying that there's there's an echo on your voice, Rabbi Joshua. Okay. And then uh, and another person saying they can't hear you. So I don't know what it is. Y ahora, mejor. Maybe it was uh, because they uh, the other one took almost over. Uh, okay. Right, so. All right. All right, going on to the next slide. Vamos a la próxima diapositiva. Hashbot lesson, a house divided. We're going to go we're going to start in Matthew 28, Matthew 28 verse chapter 12 verse 25, division. Then we're going to Devarim, Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 29 through 31. For they have done to their gods all the abominations that Jehovah hates. Bereshit Genesis chapter 18, verse 16 through 21. The outcry against Sodom and Amorah is so great. Bereshit Genesis chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. Blood is crying out for, to me from the ground. Romans chapter 2, Rodney's favorite book, verse 14 and 15. <laughs> Do naturally what to the Torah requires. Then Daniel, Daniel chapter 5, verse 1 through 5. The gold vessels which have been removed from the sanctuary of, of the house of God. Shemot Exodus chapter 18, verse 21. Who are, who are God-fearing, honest, and incorruptible. Bereshit Genesis chapter 18, verse 22 and through 33. There just needs to be 10. And finally, 2 Chronicles 7, 14, my people. Espanol, por favor. Y la lección de, de Hashabat de hoy, una casa dividida, Matiajo, Mateo 12, 25, división, de Barín, Deuteronomio 12, 29 al 31, porque, ¿no? You can hit escape, I'll just do it that way. Bueno, Deuteronomio 12, 29, 31, porque han hecho con sus dioses todas las abominaciones que Jehová aborrece. En Bereshit, Génesis 18, 16 al 21, el clamor contra Sodom y Amorá es muy grande. En Bereshit, Génesis 4, 9 al 10, la sangre clama a mí desde la tierra. Romanos, que es el... el el libro favorito de, de Ron es el de capítulo 2 al 14 al 15 ah, naturalmente lo que eh, exige la Torah Daniel 5 versículo 1 al 5 las vasijas de oro que habían sido retiradas desde el santuario de la casa del eterno en Shimon, Éxodo 18 21 quienes son temerosos de Elohim Honestos y incorruptibles. De Rechit, Génesis 18, 22 al 33, solo tienen que ser 10. En Segunda de, de Crónicas, Segundo de Crónicas 7, 14, mi pueblo. All right, they're saying your microphone is low on the internet, so go on the board. Either grab that microphone. Oh, now she's going to translate? Ah, okay. Well, how is everybody? Let's turn to Matthew chapter 12, verse 25. I gave you the wrong scripture before. Matthew 12, verse 25. Mateo 12, verso 25, por favor. As I said, uh, get ready for a history lesson. Como lo dije antes, prepárense para una historia, para un... Both, para una lección histórica. Both a secular history lesson and a scriptural history lesson. Una secular y una bíblica. Okay, so Matthew, Matthew 12, verse 25. Mateo 12, 25, por favor. However, knowing what they were thinking, Yeshua said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and every city or household divided against itself will not survive. Amen? In today's Hashabbat lesson, en la lección de hoy, What we're going to look at today is division. Lo que vamos a mirar y enfocar el día de hoy es en división. Not mathematical division. No matemáticamente. 
Okay. What we're going to be looking at is division in people. Lo que vamos a ver el día de hoy es división en las personas. What happens when a house gets divided? ¿Qué pasa cuando una casa es dividida? What happens if a nation gets divided? ¿Qué pasa cuando una nación es dividida? What happens if a kingdom gets divided? ¿Qué pasa si un reino es dividido? Okay. Because one of the things that we need to look at for our own country, una de las cosas que tenemos que mirar en nuestro propio país, we are no longer living in the United States of America. Ya no estamos viviendo en los Estados Unidos. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to look at what made them united. Vamos a mirar el día de hoy qué es lo que lo hizo al, al país unidos. What makes us united with God? ¿Qué es lo que nos hace en unión con el Señor? What divides us in the states? ¿Qué es lo que nos divide en el estado? And what divides us from God? ¿Y qué es lo que, y qué es lo que nos divide con el Señor? See, in the beginning, they were called the United States. En el principio, fueron llamados los Estados Unidos. Each state was different, a little bit different. Cada estado era un poquito diferente. But they were united in what main things that they believed in. Pero eran unidos um, en lo que pensaban. And today, we are no longer living in the United States of America. Y en el día de hoy ya no nos encontramos viviendo en los Estados Unidos. And uh, you can also put that, it, we look at the United Nations. Uh, también lo podemos ver como un, una nación unida. S countries are not united with each other at all. Los países no son unidos de uno al otro. So we're going to look at Messiah's words and what happens. Vamos a mirar a la palabra del Señor en lo que pasa. When a country is divided. Cuando, es un, cuando hay un país dividido. And even when counties are divided. Y cuando un condado es dividido. Okay. In New York. En Nueva York, they, they voted for a governor. Votaron por un gobierno. The governor who supposedly won in New York. Uh, supuestamente el que ganó en Nueva York. Only won New York City. Solamente ganó um, el estado de Nueva York. She didn't win any other county in the state of New York. No ganó ningún condado en el estado de Nueva York. But that the city of New York has more people supposedly than the rest of the state. Pero supuestamente eh, la ciudad de Nueva York tiene más uh, personas que el estado. Well, well, we're, we're not really talking about politics. What we're talking about is being united. No estamos uh, enfocándonos en política, pero en la clave del día de hoy es unido. Because we even see Israel. Porque hasta vemos Israel. Didn't they get divided once? No fueron divididos una vez. Were they divided into two, two countries? Bueno, fue dividido en dos países. So we're going to look at history, scriptural history. Vamos a ver historia uh, bíblica. And we're going to look at secular history. Y vamos a ver historia secular. Look at verse 25 again. El verso 25 otra vez, por favor. However, knowing what they were thinking, Yeshua said to them, every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined. And every city or household divided against itself will not survive. Amen. So Yeshua is talking about politics and home life. Bueno, aquí Yeshua está hablando de política y cómo um, llevar una casa. Because he's talking about kingdoms being divided. Está hablando de reinos siendo divididos. And your homes being divided. Y tus propias casas siendo divididas. So let's look at our first definition. La primera definición del día de hoy. We're going to look at the definition for the word divided. Veamos la palabra, la definición de la palabra dividido. Okay, I'm going to read in English and Ariana will do it in Spanish. Divided is G3307. Definition number one, to divide. Definition number two, to separate into parts, cut into pieces. Definition number three, to divide into parties, be split into factions. Espanol, please. La palabra dividido es G3307 y la primera definición es dividir. La segunda definición es separar en partes, cortar en trozos. Tercera definición, dividir en partes. Estar dividido en facciones. Ok, let's look at definition number two. Veamos la definición número dos. To separate into parts, cut into pieces. Separar en partes, cortar en trozos. Any nation or people. 
a cualquier car, uh, uh, nación o personas that separate into different parts que se separan en dos partes diferentes different theological parts a uh, una teología diferente you know things that are important to one state not important to another state una cosa que es importante para un estado y no para el otro What's, what Yeshua is saying Lo que Yeshua aquí is you will be cut into pieces. Vas a ser cortado en dos trozos o en dos partes. Okay, so let's write for our first note. Escribamos para nuestra primera nota. Are we a divided nation? Somos una nación dividida. Are we a divided nation? Somos una nación dividida. Are we a divided nation? Somos una nación dividida. And then the second part, how are we divided? Y la segunda parte sería cómo somos divididos. How are we divided? Cómo somos divididos. How are we divided? Cómo somos divididos. Because once you determine how we are divided, una vez que tú determines cómo somos divididos, once you know the problem, una vez que tú te des cuenta cuál es el problema, you can start working towards fixing the problem. Ya tú te enfocas en cómo o te das cuenta cómo solucionar el problema. But sometimes people can't even agree on what the problem is. Pero muchas personas no pueden estar de acuerdo cuál es el problema. Like what we need to really think about. Lo que realmente debemos de pensar. Is what are the top ten problems of our nation? Cuáles son las diez los las diez cosas principales o problemas de nuestra nación. After the top ten problems. Después de los diez. Then it, then it really, it isn't much of a problem after that. Después eso ya no hay realmente un problema. But we need to focus on what are those problems. Pero tenemos que enfocarnos cuáles son esos problemas. How did they get there? Cómo llegaron ahí. How do we fix them? Y cómo lo arreglamos. Can we fix them? Podemos arreglarlos. Okay, so, you know, what we're going to look, what we're going to look at today. Lo que vamos a ver el día de hoy. Is, are we separated into parts? Estamos separados en dos en dos partes. If God cuts us into pieces, what's going to happen there? Si el Señor nos nos corta en dos en dos trozos, ¿qué va a pasar ahí? We're going to look at scripture. Vamos a ver las escrituras. And history to show us what happens. Y historia para aprender qué es lo que pasa. Like if he cuts America into pieces. Ejemplo, si él corta Estados Unidos en dos trozos o dos pedazos. Will we survive? Sobreviviremos. Will he will he separate us from the rest of the country. No separaría el del resto del país. Okay, so we're going to look at history. Vamos a ver la historia. Both secular and scriptural. Secular y eh, es, desde la escritura. Definition number two again. La definición número dos, por favor. To, to separate into parts, cut into pieces. Separar en partes, cortar en trozos. When you get cut into pieces, your country will not stand. Cuando eres cortado en, en trozos o en pedazos, el país no se va a sostener. When your family gets cut into pieces. Cuando la familia es cortada en dos pedazos. That family will not stand. Esa familia no se va a, a mantener parada. If there's no foundation for the family. Si no hay una fundación para la familia. If there's no found foundation for the community. Si no hay una fundación um, para la comunidad. Then everybody's going to have their own opinion. Entonces cada uno tendremos nuestra propia opinión. And Yeshua says in this verse. Y Yeshua dijo en este verso. That uh, if you're divided, you will not survive. Si, eres, si estás dividido, no vas a poder sobrevivir. If there's no common morals or values. Si no hay un, un moral o, o, o valores. If one person thinks that stealing is okay. Si una persona tiene su opinión que robar está bien. You know, it's one of the one of the saddest things that goes on in poor neighborhoods. Es algo muy triste que ocurre en los vecindarios de bajos recursos. They steal from one another. Se roban uno al otro. You know, though you have a car, so your neighbor steals your car. Tienes un carro y viene tu vecino y se lo roba. Why don't you go to a nicer neighborhood and steal their car? ¿Por qué no Vas a un vecindario mejor y robas el, el, el carro de ellos. But when you don't have common morals or values. Pero cuando no tienes um, valores y, y, y moral, morals or values. Mo, eh, valores. Okay. When there's no common morals. Cuando no hay valores. Like, I never would have thought of stealing my neighbor's car. Nunca pensé 
Ni se me pasó por la mente robarle el carro al vecino. But when you live in a low, shh, I can hear you up here, please. That means the translator can't hear. I, I worked a lot of times in the inner city. Eh, trabajé mucho en las ciudades. And I was amazed at some of the things that went on in that culture. Y me quedé asombrado de las cosas que estaban pasando en esa cultura. So what we're going to be talking about is what happens Lo que vamos a estar el día de hoy es que, ¿qué pasa? when not only a lower economic area no cuando, no solamente un, un, un vecindad de, de bajos recursos, but when everybody doesn't have common morals or values. Pero cuando todo el resto de las personas no tienen valores comunes. Or what happens o qué pasa? if that state si ese estado, that community, esa comunidad, that country, ese país, does something that Jehovah, our King, abhors. ¿Qué hates. pasa si ellos hacen algo que él aborrece? That nation or people, de naciones o personas, we're going to look in the scriptures. Vamos a mirar en las escrituras. That nation or people will get dissolved. They will get totally esas, cut up. Esas personas o esas naciones van a ser destruidas. Okay, hold your place there in the Gospel of Matthew. Mantenga su Um, uh, espacio allí en Mateo. Let's prove what God does. Vamos a probar lo que el Señor hace. Hold your place there and turn to Deuteronomy Devarim chapter 12. Y vámonos a Deuteronomio 12, 29. Devarim, Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 29 through 31. Deuteronomio 12, 29, por favor. As I said, we're going to look at a, a scriptural history lesson. Como dije antes, vamos a ver una escritura histórica. And we're going to look at also a secular history lesson. Y también secular. Okay. So sometimes the the Bible is a, a secular history lesson. A veces en ocasiones la Biblia puede ser una 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 historia secular. And we're going to read a secular history lesson right there in the Torah. Y vamos a leer una de ellas. All right, so Deuteronomy Devarim 12 verse 29 through 31. Deuteronomy 12 29, por favor. When Jehovah your Elohim has cut off ahead of you the nations you are entering in order to dispossess. And when you have dispossessed them and are living there in the land, be careful after they have been destroyed ahead of you not to be trapped into following them so that you inquire after their gods and ask, how do these nations serve their gods? I want to do the same. You must not do this to Jehovah your Elohim. For they have done to their gods all the abominations that Jehovah hates. They even burn up their sons and daughters in the fire for their gods. Amen. I right, so well, this is a scriptural history lesson and a secular history lesson. Esa es una escritura secular y bíblica. Because he's saying Jehovah's saying that these nations, these secular nations, Porque Jehovah está diciendo aquí que esas naciones seculares, did evil things even unto their pagan gods. Um, hicieron cosas malvadas, um, even they, he, they, they even did these awful things to their pagan gods. También hicieron esas cosas horrendo, horribles a sus dioses paganos. Look at verse 31 again. Miren el verso 31 otra vez. You oh. must not do this to Jehovah your Elohim, for they have done to their gods All the abominations that Jehovah hates. They even burn up their sons and daughters in the fire for their gods. Amen. So Jehovah is saying that these secular nations. Yeah, uh, Jehovah está diciendo que esas uh, naciones seculares. They do evil things even unto their, their pagan gods. Hacen cosas feas o malas hasta, hasta, hasta sus dioses. Let's ask ourselves this question. Hagámonos una pregunta nosotros mismos. Where are the Emory people, the Emory? ¿Dónde estaban los uh, Mauritos? Amoreos. Are they around anymore? ¿Están por acá? No. God wiped them off the planet, right? Bueno, el Señor los eliminó. Where are the Hitti? Ay, ¿cómo se dice? Los, los Eteos. Where are the Prizi? ¿Dónde están los Prizeos? No. Ebuseos. Where are the Kenaani? Los Cananitas. Where are the Hivi? ¿Dónde están los los Eteos. And finally, where are the Yavusi? <laughs> it's interesting that she didn't know any of the names. No, it's a point. It's a point I want to make. 
es interesante que no soy yo ninguno de sus nombres. Because where are these people? Porque es donde están esas personas. Where are these people? ¿Dónde están? God wiped them off the planet. El Señor los eliminó. And in verse 31 he told you why he wiped them off the planet. Y en el verso 31 te deja saber por qué el Señor los eliminó. Now here's two that you might know. Aquí hay dos. Where are the Mayans? ¿Dónde están los mayas? Where are the Aztecs? ¿Dónde están los aztecas? He did the same thing to them. También los también hizo lo mismo con ellos. Now why did he do it? ¿Por qué lo hizo? Look at verse 31 again. Vean el verso 31 otra vez. You must not do this to Jehovah your Elohim, for they have done to their gods all the abominations that Jehovah hates. They even burn up their sons and daughters in the fire for their gods. Amen. So where are the mines? They're gone. Bueno, ¿dónde están los mayas? Pues se fueron. Where are the Aztecs? They're gone. Bueno, los aztecas. What were they doing to their children? ¿Qué estaban haciendo con sus hijos? They were burning them and sacrificing them. Los estaban quemando y sacrificándolos. Ah, uh, where's the Sumerian civilization? ¿Dónde está la civilización de, de Sam Samaritana? Samaritana. Where are they? ¿Dónde están? Another one gone, right? Bueno, es otro que también fueron eliminados. God wiped them off the planet. El Señor los eliminó. Now these were Gentiles. Esos eran gentiles. They, they didn't have Torah. No tenían Torah. And he wiped them off the planet. Y él los eliminó de la faz de la tierra. Can a righteous God do something like that? ¿Cómo un Señor justo puede hacer, puede, podría hacer algo así? We're going to get into that a little bit later. Vámonos a ir en eso un más tarde. So where is where where was Samaria? ¿Dónde estaba Samaria? It's now the country of Iraq. Bueno, uh, el día de hoy es Irak. But God wiped those people off the planet. Pero el Señor los eliminó de la faz de la tierra. Where are the Canaanites? ¿Dónde están los cananitas? They're gone too. También fueron eliminados. They were in in India and Pakistan. Es, se encontraban lo que ahora es India y Pakistán. They were a huge civilization. Era una civilización grande. But they must have done something that really made God very angry. Pero pienso, creo que hicieron algo que, que hizo, puso el Señor um, enojado. So you see that God wipes off Gentile nations from the planet. Bueno, vemos aquí que el Señor um, se deshace de, de naciones. Is America found in the Bible in the end of days? Um, America es estaría ahí en el final de los tiempos en la Biblia? We're not found in the end of days. No somos encontrados en el final de en el, los últimos tiempos. So what happened? Entonces qué pasa? We're going to look at what happens. Vamos a ver lo que pasa. Are you interested in today's lesson? ¿Están interesados en la lección de hoy? I mean, it's quite fascinating the list of countries that are missing that are found in the Bible. Es interesante. Wait, wait, what? It is very interesting. Es muy interesante. The list of countries. La list, la, la lista de países. That are no longer around. Que ya no, que ya no se encuentran. That are found in the Bible. Que son encontradas en la Biblia. And look at verse 31 again. Miren el verso 31 otra vez. You must not do this to Jehovah your Elohim, for they have done to their gods all the abominations that Jehovah hates. They even burn up their sons and daughters in the fire for their gods. Amen. There's a where are the Polynesians? Oh my goodness. ¿Dónde están los pol? Anybody ever hear of Easter Island? Las islas del este. You know where they have those big uh, those big statues? En esas estatuas tienen esas estatuas grandes. That way 85 tons. Que pesaban como 85 toneladas. That was a thriving, con, a thriving community. Esa era una comunidad muy llamativa. Are they around today? Están por ahí hoy, en el día de hoy. Are they around today? Están por ahí el día de hoy. Just the statues are there, right? Solamente las estatuas. Oh, no. Solamente las estatuas. <laughs> they're, not, they're not here, right? No se encuentran aquí. But God told us in verse 31 that what they did. Pero el Señor nos dejó saber en verso 31 lo que hicieron. So what happens if a country has been dedicated to God? ¿Qué pasa si un, un país es, es, ha sido dedicado al Señor? 
We're going to learn what happens then. Vamos a aprender qué es lo que pasa después. Look at verse 31 again. Verso 31 otra vez, por favor. You must not do this to Jehovah your Elohim, for they have done to their gods all the abominations that Jehovah, the Eternal One, blessed be His glorious name, hates. They even burn up their sons and daughters in the fire for their gods. Amen? So you see Jehovah destroys Gentile nations. Vemos aquí que Jehovah destruye naciones gentiles. So the Torah is not only for the Israel. La Torah no es simplemente es para Israel. Because if God is just, porque si el Señor si el Señor es justo, and we're going to look at Romans later on, Rodney's favorite book. Y vamos a ver el libro de Romanos. Okay, and we're going to see that they know Torah. Y vamos a ver que ellos conocen o tienen un conocimiento de la Torah. Now he's saying to us in verse 31. Nos está dejando saber aquí en verso 31. That we who know God de que nosotros que conocemos del Señor shouldn't do what the pagans are doing. No deberíamos comportarnos o hacer lo mismo que los paganos están haciendo. Because then you are divided against the kingdom. Porque entonces estás siendo tú mismo dividido entre el reino. And when you're doing something that he considers an abomination. Y cuando estás haciendo algo que él mismo considera considera una abominación. He destroys those people. Él destruye a esas personas. He didn't just destroy the nation, he destroyed the people. No solamente destruye a la nación, pero también a las personas. Where are the Aztecs? ¿Dónde están los los Aztecas? Where are the Mayans? ¿Dónde están los Mayas? It, I mean, we see their ruins, right? Bueno, vemos In Mexico, sus, you saw, saw the ruins, right? Vemos sus ruinas. Okay, so they they testify that that people was there. Y testifica que esas personas eh, estaban allí. But where are they now? Where are they a, now? ¿Dónde están ahora? What did God do with them? ¿Qué es lo que el Señor hizo con ellos? And why did He do it to them? ¿Y por qué lo, lo hizo? And are we heading for that same? Disaster. No vamos ca en camino a, a ese desastre también. Now, he used Jehovah used other people to destroy the Aztecs. Um, Jehovah usó a otras personas para destruir a los Aztecas. He used other people to destroy the Mayans. Usó otras personas para destruir a los Mayas. He used other people to destroy the Canaanites. Ed usó a, a otras personas para destruir los can cananeos. Okay, so who destroyed the Mayans? Entonces, ¿quién destruyó a los Mayas? Who destroyed the Aztecs? ¿Quién destruyó a los Aztecas? Wasn't that the the Spanish, the Spanish? Bueno, los, co the los conquistadores. Los conquistadores. Okay, the conquistadores. O colonizadores. Now were they God-fearing people? Bueno, eran unas personas temerosas del Señor. Conquistadores? No, they weren't God-fearing. No, no eran temerosos del Señor. Okay, they 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 would they would kill Jews. Bueno, también mataban a los judíos. Can anybody remember the song The Inquisition Kill the Jew the... Oh, that's from Mel Brooks. La Inquisición que también mataron a muchos judíos. Okay, it's from a movie that you can't watch anymore because there's a couple of nude scenes. <laughs> but it is a funny movie. But they were Catholics. Well, they were hiding as Catholics. All right, go, let's go back to Matthew 12. Matthew 12. Ma Vámonos de vuelta a Mateo 12, 25, por favor. Matthew 12, Matthew 12, verse 25, again, where I told you to hold your spot. You're going to keep holding that spot all the message. Eh, por favor, aguanten ese, eh, esa escritura, porque vamos a estar volviendo a ella. However, knowing what they were thinking, Yeshua said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and every city or household divided against itself will not survive. Amen. So now we're looking at the word divided again. Estamos viendo de nuevo a la palabra dividir. We're looking at definition number three. Estamos viendo ahora y enfocándonos en la definición número tres. To divide into parties, be split into factions. Espanol. Uh, It's back before the... Permítame un segundo, por favor. La tercera definición es dividir en partes, estar dividido en... All right, so what happens when we get divided? ¿Qué pasa cuando nos dividimos? We get divided into factions. Nos dividimos en fracciones. By uh, secular the secular uh, ideology. Por una ideología secular. Or we'll be divided into different groups of theology. O nos dividimos en dos grupos de teología. 
or things that you find important and other people don't. Oh, algunas cosas que pensamos nosotros que son importantes y otras personas que no. Ay, so we have that with our two system or really it's a uniparty uh, political system. What tenemos esos dos sistemas o en verdad es el la políticamente hablando la unión. We have remember Israel gets split into different factions. Bueno, uh, sabemos que um, Israel es um, dividido en dos fracciones. What, there were two groups of people going after Yeshua, right? Hay dos grupos de personas um, yendo detrás de Yeshua. They had the Pharisees and Sadducees. Tenían los fariseos y a los saduceos. Okay, so you had those two different groups of people, right? Tenías estas dos uh, grupos de personas diferentes. But isn't there one Torah? Pero no hay solamente una Torah. So they had two di- they were split into factions. Bueno, estaban divididos en fracciones. You can get divided into parties. Puede ser dividido en políticamente hablando en dos partidos. Or into tribes. O en, tru- en tribu. Or you had the, the tribes to the north and the two tribes to the south. Bueno, en la tribu del norte y la tribu del sur. So Yeshua is talking about being divided. Yeshua está hablando de ser dividido. And when you get divided, your strength weakens. Y cuando eres dividido, tu fuerza um, de baja. Then you can't fight an outside enemy. Y no puedes pelear con un enemigo extranjero o de, viniendo de afuera. Then also in the scripture what we see. Y también en la escritura lo que vemos. Is even in your group you'll get divided. Hasta en tu propio grupo vas a ser dividido. Wasn't uh, Adam and Chava divided from the Lord? No, Adán y Eva fueron divididos del Señor. And it was only the, it was only their their group, right? Y solamente era su grupo ellos dos. But somebody got into their group. Pero alguien eh, se metió, se coló en su grupo. And divided them from God. Y los dividió del Señor. Okay, so when that happens. Cuando eso pasa. Look at verse 25 again. Mira el verso 25 otra vez. However, knowing what they were thinking, Yeshua said to them, "Every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and every city or household divided against itself." Will not survive, amen. So, did Adam and Chava survive in the garden? No. Adam y Eva sobrevivieron en el jardín de él. No. And we can go through the scriptures of houses that get divided. Y podemos mirar en esas escrituras de casas que son divididas. The Pharisees and Sadducees. Los fariseos los. Sadduceos. Los fariseos los sadduceos. You remember Sadducee? They don't believe in the resurrection. That's why they're sad. You see. That's how you remember it. El rabino. Uh, sad you say is they're sad, crying. <laughs> Un chiste del rabino. <laughs> okay. So, did they survive? Ellos sobrevivieron. For 2,000 years, they were, they were missing, right? Bueno, por 2,000 años estaban perdidos. Because they got divided from God. F- fueron divididos del Señor. Okay. What happens when that nation, lo que pasa uh, con esa nación, especially a nation who people, people and land, especialmente las personas de, de, que tienen tierra has been dedicated to Elohim que la tierra fue dedicada al Señor when that group forgets their covenant cuando esas personas olvidan su pacto Jehovah gets extraordinarily angry el Señor se molesta demasiado when you're dedicated to Elohim cuando tú mismo eres dedicado al Señor and instead of being separated from the people y y y y en vez de tú separarte de las personas that Jehovah sent you to destroy que el Señor te mandó a ti a destruir and you become like those people y tú eh, te transformas como ellos what Elohim does lo que el Señor hace is he destroy, destroys you te destruye a ti mismo he sent you to get rid of those people él te manda para que tú los destruyas and you became like those people y tú te uh, has uh, optado por sus con la manera que ellos se comportan. So think about it for a second. Empiezan un segundo en esto. Israel was sent to get rid of some people, right? Israel fue mandado a que deshaciera de un grupo de personas. And they got rid of those people. Y se deshicieron de esas personas. And then Israel became like those people. Y después Israel se se convirtió como esas personas. And what did God do? Y qué es lo que fue lo que el Señor he hizo? He sent Nebuchadnezzar to get rid of us. Y mandó a otra, a otra persona. Nebuchadnezzar. Y a, a ne, ne, Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar. Mandó a Nebuchadnezzar. So, we became like 
something God hated. Mandó a Nucubosor a deshacerse de uh, nosotros y hicimos algo que al Señor no le agradó. Now, he might give our land to somebody else. Él tal vez le dio nuestras tierras o entregó a, a alguien más. Or he might let our land just lay and do nothing for hundreds of, hundreds of years, right? O tal vez uh, la tierra está ahí, pero realmente no está produciendo nada por, por muchos años. What happened? Años. What happened after God kicked Israel out of the land? ¿Qué pasó cuando um, el Señor echó a Israel de la tierra? It just became a desert for almost 2,000 years. Bueno, se fue un desierto más como unos 2,000 años. Okay. Uh, now, what was going on in, on this land that we're living in, in America? ¿Qué es lo que está pasando en esa tierra que estamos viviendo en América? You know, he sent us here to get rid of some people, right? Bueno, nos mandó a deshacernos de algunas personas que estaban viviendo aquí. He, he told us to come here nos di, les dijo que vinieran to worship God, right? Para alabar al Señor. He dedicated, we dedicated the land to God. Dedicaron esa tierra al, al Señor. And he sent us to get rid of some people. Y él mandó a deshacer, uh, nos dijo que deshaciéramos de unas personas. Now, were there people on this land? Había personas en esa tierra. There were 500 nations. Había 500 naciones. On, on the, the, what we call North America. En lo que llamamos en Norte América. There were 500 nations. Había como unas 500 naciones. Now some of those nations. Algunas de esas naciones. Were sacrificing their children to their gods. Estaban sacrificando sus hijos a sus dioses. And uh, there was a study done by a man from the University of Pennsylvania. Eh, un hombre en la, una, en la Universidad de Pensilvania hizo un estudio. His name is William Christie McLeod. Su nombre es William Christie McLeod. 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 Okay. There were nine Indian tribes that were sacrificing their children to their gods. Había nueve tribus um, um, que había, estaban haciendo sacrific sacrificando a sus hijos. In what we now call the state of Louisiana, lo que le llamamos hoy en el estado de Luisiana, there were two tribes habían dos tribus that were sacrificing their children to their gods. que estaban sacrificando a sus hijos a sus dioses. Okay, so what happened to to those tribes? Are they around anymore? Bueno, ¿y qué les pasó a esas tribus? Están por ahí o el día de hoy? They're gone. Then the, the, the Natchez tribe is gone. Bueno, no, no está. Why are they gone? Porque no están. Because God said they were doing the abominations that he hates. Porque el Señor dijo que estaban haciendo la abominación que él odia. There was another tribe, the Tamu, Tamukua in Florida. Había otra tribu, se llamaba Tamukua en Florida. They were sacrificing their children, burning them up in the fire to their God. Estaban sacrificando a sus hijos, poniéndolos en fuego a sus dioses. So what did Exodus 12, uh, well, no, it wasn't Exodus, it was Deuteronomy 12, verse 31 tell us? ¿Y qué dice Deuteronomio 12, 31? It said, God hates what they were doing, so we got rid of them. El Señor odia o aborrece lo que estaban haciendo y el Señor uh, se deshace de ellos. There was another tribe in Virginia. Había otra tribu en Virginia. And they were a large tribe in the state of Virginia. Y era grande en el estado de Virginia. So God used us to get rid of them. Y el Señor nos usó para deshacernos de ellos. Okay, God used the, 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 our people that came here from Europe uh, las personas que vinieron de Europa who were following the Bible que estaban siguiendo la Biblia to get rid of these, uh, these Indians in Virginia. Bueno, deshacerse de esos uh, indígenas um, para deshacerse de ellos. Just like, just like he used Israel to get rid of the Canaanites, right? Como usó a los israelitas a, a deshacerse de los cananeos. Well, that's not right. Bueno, eso no está bien. Well, you're going to tell God he's wrong. Bueno, le vas a tú a decir al Señor que está mal. They were doing things that he found to be, they were killing children. Eh, estaban mat a, a matando a niños. There was another tribe that was in Maryland, New York, and Pennsylvania. That was a pretty big nation. Uh, había otra tribu que estaba en Maryland. Maryland, New York, and Pennsylvania. En Nueva York, Maryland, Maryland y Pennsylvania. They were sacrificing their children and to their gods. Estaban sacrificando a sus hijos a, a sus dioses. One of God's things he hates most is when you do evil things to children. Una cosa que el Señor aborrece es cuando tú le estás haciendo uh, cosas así a los niños. There was another tribe in Idaho and Montana. Había otra tribu, Idaho y Montana. That were 
sacrificing their children to their gods. Que estaban sacrificando a sus hijos a esos dioses de ellos. So God sent the Europeans over here bringing the Bible. El Señor mandó trajo a los europeos siguiendo la Biblia. And these people offered them to follow the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Y el Señor a uh, esto, esas personas le ofrecieron a um, seguir al Señor de Abraham, Isaac, y Jacob. And they refused. Y se negaron. So he wiped this tribe off the map. Y eliminó a esa tribu. These people are gone. Y esas personas ya no están. There was another one in Idaho. No, we did that one. Nebraska and northern Kansas. Había otra, uh, otra tribu en el estado de Nebraska y Kansas. So he destroyed them also. También los destruyó. Because they were sacrificing their children. Porque también estaban sacrificando sus hijos. Okay. Uh, then there was another one in South and North Dakota, Minnesota, Nebraska, and Montana. Había otra en, uh, en el sur y el norte de Dakota, Minnesota, Nebraska, y Montana. That was a huge tribe, the Dakota es, tribe. Esta era una tribu muy grande que se llamaba Dakota. They were sacrificing their children. También estaban sacrificando sus hijos. Well, these were Gentiles. How could the God of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov kill the Gentiles? Esos eran gentiles. ¿Cómo el Señor de Abraham, Isaac y Jacob asesinó a esos uh, gentiles? They're not under the law. No están bajo la ley. Evidently they are. Evidentemente sí. So God wiped them off the planet. Entonces el Señor los eliminó. What do you think he's going to do with us? ¿Qué piensan ustedes que va a hacer el Señor con nosotros? Well, wait, there's this one last one in Wisconsin and Michigan. Hay otra más en... Um, una, otra tribu en Wisconsin y uh, Michigan. Nine different nations. Nueve naciones diferentes. Who were sacrificing their children through the fire or bleeding them to death. Que estaban sacrificando a sus hijos eh, por medio del fuego o, o sangrándolos. Sacrificing them to their gods. Sacrificándolos a los dioses de ellos. So Jehovah, as he said in Deuteronomy 12, Uh, Jehovah, como dice en el 12, verse 31, verse 31 he said they're doing what I consider to be an abomination están haciendo lo que yo considero que es uh, uh, abominable now when the people of El Elohim cuando las personas de Elohim who Elohim used to get rid of those other bad people So, uh, son usados para deshacerse de, de esas personas malas. What happens when they become like those people? ¿Qué pasa cuando ellos um, se convierten o son igual que ellos? Because are we sacrificing our children? Porque no estamos sacrificando también a nuestros hijos. To the tune of 40 million children a year. Huh? To the tune of 40 million abortions per year. Two, two, two million? There, there's They're aborting 40 million children per year. Están abortando 40 mil niños por año. So what happens when we become like them? ¿Qué pasa cuando nos convertimos como ellos? Hold your place there. Aguanten su su So you're holding the second time. Now we're going to go to Genesis, Bereshit 18. Vámonos a Génesis 18, 16 al 21. Genesis, Bereshit, chapter 18, verse 16 through 21. Génesis Capítulo 18, verso 16 al 21, por favor. Let's see what God does now. Vamos a ver lo que el Señor hace próximamente. Genesis, Bereshit, chapter 18, verse 16 through 21. Génesis 18, de 16 al 21. What's the temperature in here, Rabbi Hosho? Okay. Everybody got it? The men set out from there and looked uh, over toward Saddam, and Abraham went with them to see them on their way. Jehovah said, Should I hide from Abraham what, what I am about to do? Inasmuch as Abraham is sure to become a great and strong nation, and all the nations of the earth will be blessed by him. For I have made myself known to him, so that he will give orders to his children and to his household after him to keep the way of Jehovah and to do what is right and just, so Jehovah may bring about for Abraham what he has promised him. Jehovah said, The outcry against Saddam and Amorah is so great, and their sins so serious, that I will now go down and see whether their deeds warrant the outcry that has reached me. If not, I will know. Amen? 
Now, the outcry from somewhere came against these two cities. El, this, el, the, el grito o el lamento. Yeah, people, people were saying that bad things are happening in these two cities. Eh, las personas estaban diciendo que algo malo estaba pasando en estas dos ciudades. And it, it says there was a great outcry coming to God from, from somewhere. Uh, cabe un lamento o un llanto estaba llegando al Señor de, algún, de alguna parte. Now there was one righteous person in those two cities. Había una, una persona santa en esas dos ciudades. And that was Lot, right? Y ese era Lot. Now, is one person's outcry going to get the attention to destroy two cities? ¿Ustedes creen que un lamento de una persona va a llegar al Señor y y va a que, que requiera destruir a dos ciudades? Now these two cities were extraordinarily evil. Bueno, esas dos ciudades eran extremadamente malvadas. Do you think that they were maybe murdering people in those cities? No crean que no crean que estaban asesinando a personas en esas dos ciudades. Okay, so there's this outcry coming from somewhere. Este lamento viniendo de algún lado. And it said it was a great outcry. That means many people were crying out. Bueno, significa, eh, que había muchos lamentos. Bueno, significa que muchas personas estaban haciendo este well, llamado lamento. Look Señor. at verse 20 and 21 again. Vamos al verso 20 y 21. Jehovah said the outcry against Saddam and Amor is so great and their sin so serious that I will go down and see whether their deeds warrant the outcry that has reached me. If not, I will know. Amen. So it seems from these two verses parece como de, dejándonos llevar de esos dos versos that the outcry is by more than one person. Que el lamento o el, o el llamado o el clamar era, venía más de una persona. And it said in verse 20 y dice en el verso 20 that the sin is very serious. Que el pecado realmente es muy serio. So there's things in Torah, right? Hay cosas en la Torah that get you to become a slave que hacen que tú seas un esclavo. But there's other things that will get the death penalty towards you. Pero hay otras cosas que son requeridas la pena de muerte. One is homosexuality. Una es la homosexualidad. What about murder? ¿Qué tal el asesinato? Will that get the death penalty to you if you have two witnesses? Bueno, ¿tú creerás que eso merece la pena de muerte si tienes a dos testigos? So what we see from verse 20 lo que vemos en el verso 20 is the eternal one Jehovah the Father. Es el eterno el el Padre. He said the sin is so great it's coming from coming to his ears. Dice que el pecado es tan grande que le está llegando a sus orejas. So we know from Torah that murdering people is against God's will. Eh, sabemos de la Tora que asesinar a personas eh, um, es malo. And you will get You, you will lose your life if you kill some, if you murder somebody. Y tú pierdes tu vida misma si tú asesinas o matas a alguien. Now hold your place a second time. Eh, guarden su, su espacio, su escritura, la segunda vez. And turn to Genesis, Bereshit, chapter 4. Y váyase a Génesis. Genesis, Bereshit, chapter 4. Génesis 4, de 9 al 10. We're going to look at verse 9 and 10. Génesis 4, de 9 al 10. And switch the camera, I'm going to sit down. Genesis chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. Genesis 4, de 9 and 10, por favor. It said, Jehovah said to Cain, Where is Havel your brother? And he replied, I don't know. Am I my brother's guardian? He said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground. Amen. Let's read those two verses again. Jehovah said to Cain, Where is Havel your brother? And he replied, I don't know. Am I my brother's guardian? He said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground. Amen. Now, Cain murdered Havel, right? Cain mató a Abel, ¿verdad? But what Jehovah said in verse number 10. Pero lo que Jehovah dice en el verso 10. Is Cain murdered Havel by spilling his blood. Que 
Caín mató a Abel derramando su sangre. So he didn't just he didn't strangle him. Entonces no lo ahorcó. What did he what must he, what what did he do? Entonces qué tal vez lo que pudo haber pasado acá? He had to cut him some way, right? Bueno, tenía como una, un corte o so una herida. The blood was in the ground. Entonces la la sangre fue derramada al piso. So there had to be some way that Cain stabbed his brother. Hay una forma um, de que Caín um, um, apuñaló a su hermano. Now from the ground that blood. Entonces de esa sangre en el piso. That has your personal DNA in it. Que tiene tu tu ADN personal. Is calling from the ground. Está haciéndole el clamor al Señor. So when people say they can change your DNA, they really can't. Cuando las personas dicen que pueden cambiar su ADN, realmente no pueden. Because you have billions of cells in your body. Porque tienes billones y billones de células en tu And each one of those cells. Y cada una de esas células. Has your personal DNA in it. Tiene tu ADN personalizado. Now in Genesis 18, right? En Génesis 18. We have an outcry coming to God's ear from somewhere. Tienen un, un, un lamento, un clamor uh, uh, que viene de alguna parte. We know from what we read Sabemos por lo que leímos that sin of those two cities was very serious. Que el pecado de esas dos uh, naciones era demasiado serio, demasiado grande. Okay, and all, there was only, in Saddam there's only one righteous man. Y en Sodoma, en Sodoma había sola una persona um, um, justa. So it had to be more than one person crying out against those cities. Entonces había más de una clamándole al Señor en esas dos ciudades. So the cry was coming from somewhere, right? El lamento o el clamor estaba viniendo de alguna, de alguna parte. Now look at verse number 10. Vamos al verso 10. He said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground. Amen. So the blood was crying out for justice. Entonces el, el la sangre estaba clamando o llamando por justicia. So that outcry came up to God's ears, to Jehovah's ears, right? Ese clamor, lamento, llegó a los oídos del Señor. Because he says that in verse number 10. Porque dice eso en el verso 10. Because Havel was, was wronged, right? Porque, ¿ah? Havel was wronged. Havel estaba mal. Okay. So he was crying out to God. Entonces, él estaba clamando al Señor. So what about all the nations that Israel kicked out of the land? What about all the nations that Israel kicked out of their land? Entonces, ¿qué pasa con todas las naciones que, que Israel echó a algunas naciones de su tierra? What about the land that the Aztecs had or the Mayans had? ¿Qué pasa de la tierra que tenían los aztecas o los mayas? And that was given to Mexico and it was even in parts of America, right? Bueno, um, que era uh, que ahora es México y o algunas partes de América. Yeah. The Aztecs went all the way up to California. Los Aztecas estaban hasta por California. And the Mayans went all the way up to California. Y los Mayas también hasta por California. Okay, so what happens if now we are worse than them? ¿Qué pasa si ahora nos hemos convertido peores que ellos? Did we slaughter many of those people? Eh, asesinamos a, um, a, a esas personas. Did we kill a lot of those nine nations, those nine Indian nations? Matamos a muchas de esas nueve naciones. Okay, now we have become worse than those nations. Bueno, ahora nos hemos convertido peor que esas naciones. Will their blood be crying out from from the ground for justice? No, su su sangre está clamando. Uh, al Señor por justicia. Will their blood be crying out to God for justice? Absolutely. No, su sangre estaría clamando al Señor por justicia. Absolutamente. You, sí. you sent those people to destroy us. Uh, mandaste a esas personas que nos destruyeran. Because you said we were bad. Porque tú dijiste que éramos malos. And now we become worse than them. Y ahora ellos son peores que nosotros. Okay. So we see that in Genesis 4. Vemos esto en Génesis 4. Verse 10 that Havel's blood is crying out to the ground for, to God. En el verso 10 que la sangre de Abel está llamándole o clamándole al Señor. So God has to do something with Cain, right? Entonces el Señor se tiene que encargar de Caín. Now go back to Genesis 18. Vámonos de vuelta a Génesis 18. Genesis 18 verse 20 and 21. Génesis 18 del 20 al 21. 
where I told you to hold your spot. Jehovah said the outcry against Saddam and Amora is so great and their sin so serious that I will now go down and see whether their deeds weren't the outcry that has reached me. If not, I will know. Amen. Amen. So God is going to look and see if their deeds are worse than the previous people. Entonces el Señor va a, a mirar si, si, los, si, nos, si los pecados de nosotros son peores de los de antes. Somebody saying Alguien está diciendo to God that Saddam and Amora are doing worse than we did. Eh, Alguien está diciendo a, a, al Señor que Saddam uh, era peor de, lo, de nosotros. Somebody's making an outcry to God for justice. Alguien está haciéndole un llamado o, a, a, al Señor por justicia. Okay. So God, Jehovah comes down and says, I'm going to see for myself. So these people that were murdered in Saddam and Amora, Entonces esas personas que estaban asesinando en Saddam and Amora, maybe they're maybe they're crying out to God. Tal vez están haciéndole un clamor al Señor. But somebody's crying out to God. Entonces, pero alguien está haciendo un clamor al Señor. Maybe maybe just Lot is crying out. Tal vez eh, el Señor Lot. Or maybe the people in the flood when God destroyed the world with the flood are crying out. O los del diluvio también están clamando al Señor. All we know is that somebody has got God's attention. Todo lo único que sabemos es que alguien está llamando la atención del Señor. And what does God do with those two cities? ¿Y qué es lo que el Señor hace con esas dos ciudades? He destroys them. Las destruye. The people are destroyed. Las personas son destruidas. But the foundations were left there to to testify of what God did, right? Pero la, los cimientos se quedaron para testificar lo que el Señor hizo. Because we found the ruins of Sodom and Gomorrah, correct? Porque encontraron las ruinas de Sodom y Gomorra. And the house that had been burned with sulfur. Y también lo que fueron quemado con azufre. So exactly like the scripture said happened in real life. Bueno, exactamente lo que las escrituras dice pasó en la vida real. So Jehovah investigated the sin himself before destroying them. El Señor investigó um, el mismo um, antes del destruir. Okay. So he's going to investigate you before good or bad things happen. Él te va a investigar a ti primero antes que algo malo pase. Especially bad things. He's going to make sure before he chastises you. Él se va a asegurar antes de darte el castigo. That he's going to make sure you deserve what you're going to get. Él se va a asegurar antes de dar el castigo que tú te mereces lo que él te va a dar. Go back to the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew chapter 12. Uh, vámonos de vuelta a Mateo 12:25. Por favor. Chapter 12 verse 25. Mateo 12:25. Let's go back to Yeshua's words. However, knowing what they were thinking, Yeshua said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined and every city or household divided against itself will not survive amen, amen. so when that kingdom gets divided into f- fractions cuando ese reino es dividido en fracciones or into different parties o en dos um, um, en dos mitades now yeshua says in verse 25 yeshua dijo en el verso 25 he said every kingdom todo el reino divided against itself dividido uh, dividido entre sí mismo let's take a look at the definition for the word every vamos a, a ver la definición por la palabra todos o cualquiera i'm going to read in english and ariadna is going to do it in spanish every and in some translations it's the word any it's g3956 number 1 definition number 1 is individually Number two, each, every, any, all, the whole, everyone, all things, everything. Español. Todo, la definición de, de todos o cualquiera es G3956 y la primera definición es individualmente. Segunda definición, cada uno, cada, cualquiera, todos, entero, todos, todas las cosas, todo. So let's look at definition number two. Vamos a ver la definición número dos. Each, every, any, all, the whole, everyone, all things, everything. Cada uno, 
definición número dos, perdón, cada uno, cada, cualquiera, todos, entero, todos, todas las cosas, todo. So Yeshua is saying the word of God is not only for the Jewish kingdom. Entonces el Señor dijo que la palabra de Dios no es solamente para el reino. He's saying every kingdom. Está diciendo todo, so todo the, el reino. So the English Empire. Entonces el imperio inglés. The Spanish Empire. El imperio español. The Mayan Empire. El imperio maya. The Aztec Empire. El imperio azteca. Every kingdom that's divided against God will be <coughs> Ruined. Todo el reino que sea dividido con el Señor va a ser ruinas. So the word of God is not only for the Hebrew people. Entonces la palabra del Señor no es solamente para las personas um, um, de Israel, uh, hebreos. So the word is not only for the Jewish kingdom; it's for everybody. La palabra del Señor no es solamente para los judíos; es para todo el mundo. Every nation or kingdom or people. Para todas las naciones, reino o ciudades. So what we need to do is look at the wide implications of what Yeshua said. Entonces debemos que ver lo que el Señor, la, la, las palabras que el Señor dijo. So Yeshua is saying every kingdom, right? Yeshua dijo todo el reino, ¿verdad? So that means it doesn't matter if you're a Jew or a Gentile. No importa si eres un hebreo o un gentil. The same standard of judgment applies to you. También el mismo estándar aplica para ti. Because Yeshua was saying every kingdom. Porque el Señor dijo todo el reino. So where are the Canaanites today? ¿Dónde están los cananeos el día de hoy? Where are those nine Indian nations? ¿Dónde están esas uh, naciones, esas nueve naciones? Is there any of them around it here today? No están aquí alrededor de nosotros. El Anybody de hoy? ever see any Mayan or Aztec? Descendants. Algunos de han visto. Did you? <laughs> a, a, algunos mayas o aztecas. Are they around? Are they around in mass numbers like they were? No. Uh, ¿Están como, como un grupo como eso estaban antes? No. Uh, now the Mayan Empire went through half of South America all the way through Central and North America. Eso, el, 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 uh, el imperio uh, maya se, se corría hasta um, el nor Norte América Sur, uh, no, América del Sur, perdón. And Machu Picchu was the middle of their kingdom. Y en Machu Picchu, en Perú, ahí es donde estaba, eh, eh, se encontraban en medio de allí. Because Machu Picchu means belly button, the middle. Porque Machu Picchu significa ombligo. Okay, so that was the middle of their empire. That meant it went south and north. Estaba ahí era eh, el ombligo de ahí, entonces era el norte y sur. So Yeshua is saying every kingdom divided against itself will be destroyed. Entonces Yeshua dijo todo el reino dividido. Uh, de mí va a ser destruido. So that means the same standard applies to the Jew and the Gentile. Entonces los mismos estándares o reglas aplican para los judíos y los gentiles. That means that you'll be blessed the same way. Significa que vas a ser bendecido de la misma manera. And you'll be cursed the same way. Y vas a ser maldecido la misma manera. Now hold your place there in the Gospel of Matthew. Aguanten su, su escritura ahí en Matías. And turn to one of our favorite books, Romans chapter 2. Y vámonos a Romanos 2. Romans 2. Romanos capítulo 2, verso del 14 al 15. Romans 2, verse 14 and 15. Romanos 2, 14 al 15. Please. Romans 2, verse 14 and 15. Romanos 2. De 14 al 15, por favor. Everybody got Romans 2? Verse 14 and 15. Verso 14 y 15. For whenever Gentiles who have no Torah do naturally what the Torah requires, then these, even though they don't have Torah for themselves, are Torah. For their lives show that the conduct The Torah dictates is written in their hearts. Their conscience also bears witness to this, for their conflicting thoughts sometimes accuse them and sometimes defend them. Amen? Amen. Let's read those two verses again. For whenever Gentiles who have no Torah do naturally what the Torah requires, then these, even though they don't have Torah, for themselves are Torah, for their lives show the conduct 
The Torah dictates it's written in their hearts. Their conscience also bears witness to this. For their conflicting thoughts sometimes accuse them and sometimes defend them. Amen. Can we turn the air conditioning on a little bit at 70, 73, please? So what did Romans just tell us? Entonces, ¿qué es lo que nos dice aquí en la Escritura de Romanos? That these Gentiles are doing what Torah tells them to do. Que esos gentiles están haciendo lo que la Torah les dice que hagan. Because Torah is inside of us. Porque la Torah vive en nosotros. The people, las personas, the nations, naciones, the kingdoms, eh, reinos, will choose to do evil or good according to Torah. Van a ellos a seleccionar o escoger si quieren hacer el bien o el mal a uh, uh, llevándose por la por la Torah. So why could God judge the Mayans and the Aztecs? ¿Por qué el Señor puede dar juicio a los mayas y los aztecas? Why could he judge them? ¿Por qué puede darle juicio? Because Paul tells us Torah is in our hearts. Porque Pablo nos dice que la Torah son nuestros corazones. How could God judge the Canaanites? ¿Cómo el Señor puede juzgar a los cananeos? Because verse 14 and 15 tell us that Torah is in our hearts. Porque el verso 14 y 15 nos deja saber que la Torah está en nuestros corazones. How could God judge all those nations that we read about in Deuteronomy 12? ¿Cómo el Señor puede juzgar a todas esas naciones que acabamos de mencionar en Deuteronomio 12? Because Torah is in our hearts. Porque la Torah vive en nuestros corazones. Because our the God of Abraham, Abraham Yitzhak and Yaakov is righteous, right? Porque el Señor de Abraham y Sabi Jacob es justo, ¿verdad? Is he righteous? Es justo, ¿verdad? Of course he's righteous. Claro que sí es justo. Because Torah is in people's hearts. Porque la Torah vive en el corazón de las personas. And we just read about that in verse 14 and 15. Acabamos de leerlo en verso 14 y 15. How could he judge those Indian nations? ¿Cómo pudo juzgar esas naciones indígenas? Who were sacrificing their children? Que sacrificaron a sus hijos. Because Torah is in their hearts. Porque la Torah vive en sus corazones. So a righteous God can judge righteously. Un Dios justo da un juicio justo. But the key we should also say. Pero la clave aquí is all knowledge of good and evil is inside of every one of us. Toda um, uh, sabiduría del bien y el mal está en nosotros. Why is all knowledge of good and evil inside of all of us, Kurt? Because we're descendants of Adam. ¿Por qué está, sabemos el bien y el mal? Porque somos descendientes de Adam. So inside of you teenagers is good and evil. You're going to have to choose. Eh, dentro de todos nosotros eh, vive tenemos el bien y el mal y tenemos que escoger. Let's look at Romans 2, verse 14 and 15 again. Vámonos a Romanos 2, 14 y 15 otra vez. For whenever Gentiles who have no Torah do naturally what the Torah requires, then these, even though they don't have Torah, for themselves are Torah. For the lives show that the conduct the Torah dictates is written in their hearts. Their conscience also bears witness to this, For their conflicting thoughts sometimes accuse them and sometimes defend them. Amen. So he's telling you that Torah is inside of you. So when you're doing what Torah says not to do, Entonces, tú estás algo que la Torah dijo que no lo haga, and God hands you over to another people, Entonces, el Señor te a otras personas. why did he hand the Mayans over to the conquistadors? Porque el Señor de, uh, entregó a los mayas a los conquistadores. Because the Mayans knew that what God wanted. Porque de una forma los mayas sabían lo que el Señor quería. And how do we know that? Because Paul tells us in Romans that Torah is in your heart. ¿Cómo sabe, ¿Y cómo podemos decir esto? Bueno, porque en la Torah nos dice aquí, uh, la Escritura de Romanos dice que, que la Torah vive en tu corazón. How could those Bible believers kill all those First Nations Indians? ¿Cómo esas personas que creen en, en la Biblia mataron a, a todos estos uh, nati americanos nativos? Well, they were killing their children. Bueno, estaban asesinando a sus hijos. And God says murder is a mortal sin. Bueno, y el Señor dice que asesinar a, a alguien es una, un pecado moral. Revelation 22 says murderers don't get into heaven. Re Apocalipsis 22 dice que los, ases los que son asesinos no van a llegar al reino del So God gave those nine, he gave all those nations over to us. Bueno, esas, el Señor entregó esas naciones, nos entregó esas naciones. Now, is our nation doing worse than those nations before us did? Ahora, nuestra nación no está haciendo peor que lo que hicieron esas naciones. 
What do you think is going to happen to us, everybody? ¿Qué creen que va a pasar con nosotros? We got some trouble on the way. Tenemos problemas en camino. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 12, verse 25. Vamos de vuelta a Matía, Mateo 12, 25. Anybody learn anything here today? Is it a good lesson the Lord has given us today? And we get, went to the book of Romans. Ronnie's favorite book. So the Gentiles know Torah. Hmm. Matthew 12, verse 25, where I told you to hold your spot. However, knowing what these were, th these were thinking, Yeshua said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and every city or household divided against itself will not survive. Do you have air conditioning on? I feel heat coming at me. I feel hot and cold coming at me at the same time. Please don't do that to my electric bill. I'm going to put a humidifier and a dehumidifier in a room and let them fight it out. <laughs> Now do we have cool on both of those? Thank you. Yeah, just uh, we don't need a lot of, because tomorrow night it's supposed to go down to 20 degrees. But it's hot right now. All right, Matthew 12, verse 25. However, knowing what they were thinking, Yeshua said to them, every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and every city or household divided against itself will not stand. Amen. So Yeshua says every kingdom. Yeshua dijo todo el reino. Once again, Yeshua's every kingdom, he says, that's divided against itself will be ruined. Eh, dice aquí, eh, el Señor nos deja saber que todo el reino que se ha dividido de él mismo va a ser ruinas. Okay, let's take a look at the definition for ruin. Vamos a mirar la definición de ruinas. I'm going to do it in English, and Ariana's going to mutilate it in Spanish. I mean, talk about it in Spanish. I'll try. <laughs> Ruined. In some of your translations, it's laid waste. It's G2049. Number one, to make desolate. Lay waste. Number two, to ruin. Bring to desolation. Number three, to despoil one. Strip her of her treasures. Español. Arruinado, asolado. Uh, es G2049 y la primera definición es hacer desolado, despojar. Segunda definición, arruinar, llevar a la desolación. Tercera definición, despojar a uno, despojarla de sus tesoros. Every kingdom. Todo el reino. Or people. O personas. That divide themselves against Jehovah's kingdom. Que se dividen um, del reino del Señor. Look at definition number one again. Miren la definición número uno, por favor. To make desolate lay waste. De hacer desolado o despojar. So, where are the Canaanites today? Entonces, ahora, ¿dónde se encuentran los cananitas día de hoy? Ali, are they around? What about the, the Samaritans? Are they around? No? Hmm. What about the Polynesians? ¿Qué tal los polinos? The ones on Easter Island. Los, I need to try to say, en, el, en las islas de este. Are they around? Are the Polynesians around anymore? ¿Están cerca? What about the Persians? There's only a few of those left, right? Pers Persians? The Persians. O los Persios. Wasn't the Persian Empire huge? No, el, uh, el, el imperio Persio era muy grande. According to the book of Esther, it was 127 providences. De acuerdo al libro de Esther, eran muchos. Where are they today? ¿Dónde están el día de hoy? There's only a few people left of the Persians. Entonces quedan unos cuantos. So when you come against God, cuando te vuelves en contra del Señor, He says He's going to lay waste to your nation. Entonces dice que va a ser, uh, va a ser desolada, tu nación va a ser desolada. Look at definition number three. Vea la definición número tres. To despoil one, strip her of her treasures. De despojar a uno o despojarla de sus tesoros. Every kingdom that divides itself against Jehovah's kingdom. A cualquier reino que se divida de, de, del, del reino del Señor. Will be stripped of its treasures, right? Va a ser despojada de sus tesoros. That's the word that Yeshua used, right? Esa fue la palabra que Yeshua usó. Hold your place there in the Gospel of Matthew. Aguanten su... su, su 
su lugar ahí en el, en el Evangelio de Matías. Let's see if this is true that God's going to strip them of their treasures. Uh, well, Let's see if this is true. Vamos a ver si es verdad. That God will strip you of your treasures. Que el Señor te va a despojar de tus tesoros. Turn to the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 5. Vámonos al libro de Daniel. Daniel chapter 5, please. Daniel capítulo 5, verso de 1 al 5. Let's see if God strips you from your treasures. Vamos a ver si el Señor te despoja de tus tesoros. Let's see if the Bible tells us a good history lesson. La Biblia nos va a dejar saber de una historia muy buena. Daniel chapter 5, verse 1 through 5. Daniel capítulo 5, de 1 al 5. I found, I found the word in Spanish. For Polynesians? Yeah. Po Polynesians is Polynesios. Los Polynesios. 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 Polynesios sounds more Greek. Okay. Daniel chapter 5. Daniel chapter 5, verse 1 through 5. Daniel uh, capítulo 5 de 1 al 5. Let's see what God does when you come against his kingdom. Vamos a ver lo que el Señor hace cuando tú te rebelas eh, en contra de su reino. Belshazzar the king gave a great banquet for thousands of his lords. And in the presence of the thousands he was drinking wine. While tasting the wine, Belshazzar ordered that the gold and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had removed from the temple in Jerusalem be brought so that the king, his lords, his wives, and his concubines could drink from them. So they brought the gold vessels, which had been removed from the sanctuary of the house of God of Elohim in Jerusalem. And the king, his lords, his wives, and his concubines drank from them. They drank their wine and praised their gods made of gold, silver, bronze, iron, wood, and stone. Suddenly, a finger of a human hand appeared and began writing on the plaster of the palace wall by the lampstand. When the king saw the palm of the hand that was writing, amen. Let's go back to verse number three. Vamos a vuelta al verso tres, por favor. So they brought gold vessels which had been removed from the sanctuary of the house of Elohim in Jerusalem. And the king, his lords, his wives, and his concubines drank from them. Amen. First question, everybody. La primera pregunta. How did the, the sanctuary equipment get to Belshazzar? Belshazzar? How, how, how did the stuff from the temple of God ¿cómo las cosas del, del, del templo del Señor get into the pagan king's hands? Llegaron a parar a las manos de este rey pagano. Well, God left his house, right? Bueno, el Señor se marchó de su casa. And then... He gave it over to the pagans. Y él se lo entregó a los paganos. Because Israel had been divided from their God's kingdom, right? Porque Israel esto, eh, había sido dividido um, del reino del Señor. And what did Yeshua tell us in the Gospel of Matthew? Y qué fue lo que el Señor nos dejó saber en el, en el Evangelio de Matías? A house divided will not stand. Una casa dividida no va a quedar parada. So God gave the vessels over to the pagans, entonces, Gentile pagans. Entonces el Señor le entregó sus, sus uh, objetos del santuario a los paganos. And then Israel got sent into exile. Y eh, Israel fue mandado al exilio. Now what we just read. Ahora lo que acabamos de leer. Is these pagans, these Gentile pagans. Esos paganos gentiles started to drink from the holy vessels, right? Empezaron a tomar de, de estos uh, vasijas santas. Now, who, who was the only one okay to use these vessels? The priest. ¿Cuál es cuál la persona que está, uh, um, que está bien que los use? Who's the only people that can drink from these vessels? ¿Cuáles son los, los únicos que pueden tomar de estas vasijas? That would be the Kohanim, right? Bueno, son los Kohanitas, los Kohanim. So who's drinking from these vessels? ¿Y quién es aquí tomando de estas vasijas? The pagan king and his wives and his concubines. Un rey pagano, sus esposas y sus concubinas. How could God chastise a pagan who's drinking from his, his stuff? ¿Cómo es que el Señor castigó a, a este rey pagano que está tomando de sus cosas santas? What did Romans 2 tell us? Que es lo que nos deja saber. That the Gentiles know Torah even though they don't have Torah. Que los saben de la Torah, 
aunque no conozcan de la Torah. So what happens to those pagans for drinking from God's equipment? ¿Y qué pasó con esos paganos que estaban a, a, a tomando de esas vasijas santas? What did the hand write on the wall? ¿Qué fue lo que escribió el Señor uh, en la pared? The hand wrote something on the wall, right? La mano del Señor escribió algo en la pared. It wrote many, many tekel ufarsim. You don't have to translate it. It says you've been now translate. You've been found waiting and wanting in the balance. Ha sido encontrado y pesado en la balanza. And then what happens to Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom? ¿Y qué pasa de, del reino de Nabucodonosor? They, it was given over to another pagan. Y fue entregado a otro pagano. So this pagan was used to chastise Israel. Este pagano fue usado para castigar a Israel. Then another Gentile pagan chastised them. Y viene otro reino pagano a castigarlo a él. Now look at Daniel chapter 5 verse 5. Veamos Daniel 5 verso 5. Yes, single, single. Not single de mayo, single, single. Suddenly the finger of a human hand appeared and began writing on the plaster of the palace wall by the lamps. And when the king saw the palm of the hand that was writing, amen. Mm -hmm. Now these Gentiles are going to be judged for drinking from Jehovah's cups. Ahora esos gentiles van a ser juzgados por tomar en las vasijas del Señor. Now they're going to be judged by a nation worse than them. Ahora van a ser juzgados por una nación peor que ellos. So let's think about our country of America. Tomemos un minuto para pensar en nuestro país de América. We were used to chastise those Indian nations. Uh, fuimos usados para castigar a esas uh, naciones indígenas. Because we were following the Bible. Porque estábamos siguiendo la Biblia. But now we're not following the Bible anymore. Pero ahora ya no la estamos siguiendo. What's going to happen to us? ¿Qué va a pasar con nosotros? Okay. Now, another reference, this isn't the only reference of a Gentiles getting chastised by God. A otra referencia de, hay más referencias de una nación siendo castigada por el Señor. How many times do we see the word mice in Scripture? ¿Cuántos, cuántas veces hemos visto la palabra um, ratones en las Escrituras? Ratones, I just love that Spanish word, ratones. In, we're not going to turn to it, in 1 Samuel chapter 5, no vamos a ir a ella, pero en primera de Samuel. Remember when the Gentiles took the Ark of the Covenant? ¿Se acuerdan cuando los gentiles tomaron la Arca de, de Pacto? And they put, brought it to Ashdod. Y las llevaron a, a Ashdod. A, a Gentile land. Una tierra gentil. What did God do to, to those Gentiles? ¿A ¿Qué el Señor hizo a esos gentiles? He sent them tumors, right? Les dio tumores. And they had to make gold ratones y tenían eh, ratones de uh, de oro now in 1 Samuel chapter 5 verse 5 through 7 en la primera de Samuel de 5 de 5 al 7 ok the people got tumors las personas tuvieron tumores the gentile people got tumors las personas gentiles tenían tumores were they the ones that stole the, took the ark no fueron ellos que tomaron la arca? No, but they suffered with tumors because of what their government did. No, ellos no fueron los que tomaron la arca de pacto, pero sufrieron las consecuencias con tumores por lo que el gobierno de ellos hicieron. Let me say that a little slower. The people suffered. Las personas sufrieron. Because of what the government did. Por las consecuencias, a las consecuencias de lo que hicieron el gobierno. The government suffered also. El gobierno también sufrió. But the people who were not righteous also suffered. Pero las personas que no eran justas también sufrieron. Just hold on one second, please. Interesting, don't you think? What a fantastic history lesson. Interesante, ¿no creen? Una historia muy fantástica. And we've only been in the Bible for history so far. Y, y, toda, y todavía no hemos pasado a la otra historia secular. We're going to get to secular history soon. Vamos a llegar a ella en un segundo. So, pay attention. So, how could 
a righteous God, como un, un, un señor justo, send tumors to Gentiles who don't know Torah. Le mandaría tumores a gentiles que no conocen de la Torah. Well, hey Rodney, what's your book say? Romans 2? It's in their heart. Porque que dice Romanos que está en el corazón. Uh, that's why, why I guess you need a circumcised heart. Por eso yo creo que necesitas el corazón circuncidado. Hmm, so God sent tumors on a bunch of Gentile people? Oh, uh, el, señor, el Señor le mandó tumores a esas personas gentiles Who, their government, their army stole the ark. que su, su gobierno, su ejército robó el arca del pacto y no fue después que entregaron la, la arca del pacto para atrás y se arrepintieron, sanaron cosas que te hacen go cosas que te hacen preguntarte a ti mismo hmm. Let's go back to Matthew 12. vámonos de vuelta a Matías 12 Verse 25 again. verso 25 otra vez Aren't these words of Yeshua very powerful? no esas palabras de Yeshua son muy poderosas Matthew 12, Matthew 12 verse 25 however knowing what they were thinking Yeshua said them every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined And every kingdom, every city or household divided against itself will not survive. Amen. This is very powerful what Yeshua told us. Eso es muy poderoso uh, de lo que Yeshua nos dejó saber. Now what is really powerful about this? Lo que es realmente poderoso de esto. It's a worldwide eternal truth. Es una verdad mundialmente. So let's see how this applies to America. Vamos a ver cómo aplica esto a América. The nation that people are living in. La nación donde muchas personas están viviendo. Now, there's a lot of people in America. Hay muchas personas en América that don't call themselves Americans. Que no se llaman ellos mismos americanos. But it applies to the place that you're living in. Pero aplica en el sitio donde tú estás viviendo. Because remember the people in Ashdod got tumors, they were living there. Porque se recuerdan de de esas personas de Ashdod que están viviendo ahí. So you might not say you're American, you might you know, be here but you're not American. Um, tal vez tú no te consideres americano, pero estás, estás viviendo aquí. But you're living here. Pero estás viviendo aquí. So what's going to happen to everybody that's living on that land? Entonces lo que va a pasar a todas las personas que están viviendo en esas tierras. So the land that you're living in is going to experience a tribulation. La la tierra en tú estás viviendo Uh, o te encuentras va a ser va a pasar una tribulación. Now we've looked at Bible history already, right? Ya vimos la el historia el lado de la historia bíblica. We also looked at nine Indian nations that were living here, right? Y también vimos a nueve naciones indígenas que estaban viviendo aquí. We saw that they were doing child sacrifices. Vimos que estaban haciendo sacrificios de niños. And we established that Jehovah took their land away from them and gave it to us. Y también discutimos y hablamos de que el Señor um, les quitó la tierra de ellos y nos las entregó a nosotros. Because those people were abhorrent to God, right? Porque esas personas eran una abominación para el Señor. But they knew God in their hearts. Pero sabían o tenían un conocimiento del Señor en sus corazones. According to Romans chapter 2 verse 14 and 15. De acuerdo a Romanos. They know Torah because it lives in their heart. Uh, saben la Torah porque vive en sus corazones. So Jehovah took their land and gave it to us, right? So el Señor les quitó su tierra y nos las dio a nosotros. We already established ya establecimos that even the chosen people are not exempt from Jehovah's wrath. Que, que ni las, los escogidos por Jehovah son a excepción del Señor. Because in Daniel chapter 5 porque en Daniel uh, capítulo 5 Nebuchadnezzar was drinking from the things from the temple, right? El hijo de Nebuchadnezzar estaba tomando las vasijas del templo santo. How did he get those, uh, those items? ¿Cómo él, él en, um, tu, obtuvo esos, estos objetos? He conquered Israel, right? Él conquistó, gobernó a Israel. Now, where were the people of Israel? ¿Dónde estaban las personas de Israel? They got dispersed throughout his kingdom, right? Fueron dispersados en su reino. Okay, they weren't living in the land anymore. Ya no están viviendo en la tierra más. So nobody in the world is exempt from Jehovah's wrath, whether you're a Jew or a Gentile, doesn't matter. Nadie en la excepción de, de la ira del Señor, seas un gentil o un judío. So we have to look at our history. Tenemos que ver nuestra historia. 
so that we know what's coming our way. Para ver qué es lo que viene, o se aproxima a nuestros caminos. Now there was a group called the Pilgrims. Hay un grupo que se llamaban los Puritanos. Now they took a very long journey. Tomaron un viaje muy largo. They got in a very small boat. Uh, se metieron en un bote muy pequeño. Risking, it took like three months to get from Europe to, um, to North America. Uh, tomó como aproximadamente tres meses de, de Europa a uh, viniendo para acá a América. Imagine being stuck in a boat 150 feet big for three months. Imagínese uh, personas uh, est estar allí en, 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 en por tres meses en un bote. With no showers. Y, y con no, con no hay baños. No running water. Con no agua. No, no fresh food, no except comida. for the fish maybe you caught. No, no había comida fresca, uh, tal vez de los que tú podías pescar. On a boat with the same people for three months Con straight. Con la misma gente por tres meses. And you had no radar to tell you what weather was coming at you? Y no tenías ningún radar de, de dejarte llevar porque uh, tiempo ven, se acercaba hacia ti. Why would they risk their lives to come from Europe to here? Porque ellos arriesgarían sus vidas de venir de Europa acá. The pilgrims came to this land so that they can follow the Bible. Los uh, puritanos o pilgrim vinieron, arriesgaron sus vidas uh, viniendo para acá para seguir la Biblia. Did, did you know the Saturday Sabbath, the Shabbat, was outlawed in Europe? ¿Sabías tú que las leyes de guardar el reposo, Shabbat, um, eh, fue um, ah, prohibida en Europa? The biblical holy days were outlawed in, in Europe. Los días santos, los, los días bíblicos um, santos fueron prohibidas en Europa. From the 1200s to the 1400s, in the 1600s. The 1600s. From 1200 to 1600, they were outlawed. De los mil, dos mil. De los mil doscientos a los mil doscientos. So they got into this very small boat. Se metieron en este bote muy pequeño. To come here to America. A venir acá a América. Also that they could keep the Shabbat. También para guardar el día de reposo. And on November 11, 1620. Y en noviembre 11 de 1620. Governor William Bradford. El gobernador William Bradford. And the leaders on the Mayflower. Y los líderes de eh, la Mayflower signed what's called the Mayflower, Mayflower Compact. Firmaron lo que se llamaba el compacto de la Mayflower. Before they got off the boat. Antes de ellos salir del bote. Before they stepped one foot on this new land. Antes de dar un paso a esta nueva tierra. On a place called Plymouth Rock in Massachusetts. En, en, en un sitio que se llama Plymouth Rock en, en el estado de Massachusetts. It's very important to know that it's Plymouth Rock and what's now called Massachusetts. Que era antes llamado Plymouth Rock y ahora es llamado Massachusetts. Before they got off that boat. Antes de ellos salir de ese bote. They acknowledged God's sovereignty over their lives. Les dieron al Señor soberanidad sobre sus vidas. And the need to obey God. Y, y declararon que necesitaban obedecer al Señor. And they dedicated this land to him before they got off the boat. Y dedicaron a uh, esa tierra al Señor antes de salir de ese bote. Okay, this was in 1620. Eso fue en los 1607. In a place called Plymouth Rock, which is now known as Massachusetts, the state of Massachusetts. Que se llamaba Plymouth Rock y ahora lo conocemos por Massachusetts. They wanted to acknowledge that God was in charge of their lives. Querían um, um, reconocer que el Señor estaba uh, uh, um, um, dedicándole sus vidas al Señor. Because what did Romans chapter 2 tell us? ¿Qué es lo que nos dice Romanos? That Torah lives inside our hearts, right? Que la Torah viva dentro de ti. And they wanted to follow Torah in their communities. Y querían seguir a la Torah en sus comunidades. Which was forbidden in Europe. Que eso estaba prohibido en Europa. But even though this was 1620, a aunque eso era en, en los 620, before them, this land was already dedicated to God. Antes de eso, esa tierra ya estaba dedicada al Señor. Before the pilgrims got here. Antes de los puritanos o pilgrim. Now they got off the boat in 1607. Salieron del bote en el 1606. Okay. There was a, and the, 
They signed something, I'm going to say this again, they signed something called the Mayflower Compact. Eh, firmaron uh, esto que se llama el Compacto Mayflower. And if you're looking up uh, information on the internet, it's also called the American Covenant. Y si, y si vas y buscas esto en internet, también se va a llamar el Pacto uh, uh, Americano. This was in the year 1607. Eso fue en el año 1606. But somebody else dedicated this land to God in 1606. Pero, uh, pero también esa tierra fue dedicada en el 1606. In 1606. En el 1606. In a state called Virginia. En el estado llamado Virginia. Is something called the Virginia Charter. The Virginia. Virginia Charter. Eh, de que se llama the Virginia Chart. Uh, called the Compact. Oh, Compacto. They did, before they got off the boat in Virginia. Antes de ellos salir uh, del bote en Virginia. They dedicated this land to God. Le dedicaron esas tierras al Señor. They said by the providence of Almighty God. Por el, por um, por un, un, el Señor poderoso. And the divine majesty of our God. Y la, y la divinidad majestuosa de, de nuestro Señor. In the propagation of the Christian religion. Y la propagación de la religión cristiana. They're, they're telling you they came here with the great commission. Te está dejando saber que vinieron con una comisión muy grande. What did Yeshua say? In Matthew 28, Yeshua, verse 19. ¿Qué es lo que Yeshua dijo en Mateo? Therefore go make disciples of all nations. Y, um, uh, discípulos de todas las naciones. So before they got off the boat in Virginia, antes de ellos salir del bote en Virginia, in 1606, en el año 1606, they agreed to, pr to promote Messiah Yeshua to the people they met. Ellos uh, uh, estuvieron de acuerdo en propagar uh, al del Señor a todas las personas que ellos iban conociendo. They dedicated this land to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Dedicaron esa tierra a, al Señor de Abraham, Isaac, y Jacob. They brought the scriptures. Trajeron sus escrituras. They, and they said we were going to follow the word of God in this nation. Y dijeron que iban a seguir la palabra del Señor en esta nueva nación. And they followed the Bible. Y siguieron la Biblia. How did we get the government that we have today? ¿Cómo es que llegamos al gobierno que tenemos el día de hoy? How did we get a self How did self begin? ¿Cómo es que el gobierno de ellos mismos empezó? When they came here in the 1600s, cuando vinieron en los años 1600, the kings ruled the earth. Los reyes ellos gobernaban la tierra. What, what they were going to do here was different than any other country had ever done. Lo que iban a hacer aquí era muy diferente a todo el país y todo lo que se había visto en esa tierra. Except for one country. Excepto de un país. Israel. Israel. It was only one other country ever that did what we did here. Era el único país um, que iban a hacer algo como lo que hicieron aquí. What they did in Virginia. Lo que hicieron en Virginia. They had the first popular, popular elected legislative assembly. Tuvieron a wait, wait. popular. You might want to move a little closer because you need glasses from that distance. Pop. No, I know. I can see, but I don't know. They, they had the first popular elected government. Tuvieron a eh, eh, los uh, votaciones o las lecturas populares. The people elected their government. Las personas elegían a su gobierno. What's the first representative government ever recorded in history? ¿Cuál fue el primer gobierno? Um, grabado en las historias was at in Exodus chapter 20 or 21 in Exodus uh, 20 21 when the people elect Moses to talk to God for them cuando las personas eligieron a, Mo a Moisés para que hablar hablara con el Señor por ellos that's the first election of a secular person to talk to God esa fue um, la elección de las personas para que hablara con el Señor now Jamestown was a was a business community. Jamestown, el, el pueblo de Jamestown era una comunidad de negocio. They made a, the whole community was all about business. Toda la comunidad era de negocio. Okay, that came from England. Que vino de Inglaterra. But they had a lot of famine. Fam Pero tenían mucha hambruna. Diseases. Uh, um, enfermedades. The Indians kept attacking them. Los, los 
nativos indígenas venían a atacarnos. They had, they had a labor shortage. Ten, no había trabajo. Okay. So they had, it was a business, so they needed more employees. Era de negocios, entonces necesitaban más uh, personal de trabajo. And in the year, in the year 1619, y en el año 1619, on July 30th, en julio 30, they had their first elections. Tuvieron su primera elección. Where the people elected representatives to represent them with the government. Cuando las, las personas elegían a esos representantes eh, que los representaran. The first country outside of Israel ever to do something like this. Eh, el primer país fuera de Israel de hacer esto. This happened in 1619. Pasó en, los año, en el año 1619. Remember that day. Recuerden ese de ese día. 1619. 1619. We'll get to it in a minute. Vamos a llegar en un minuto. You want to see what the devil's doing? It's in your history. Quieren ver lo que el enemigo está haciendo en nuestra historia. In 1619, America began its first of its kind secular non-Israeli government. En el año 1619, América hizo su primer uh, uh, gobierno secular. And the year was 1619. Y el año era 1619. Now, for these people to be elected, para que esas, gente, esas personas fueran eh, eh, seleccionadas, these men had to fear God. Esas personas tendrían que ser temerosas del and Señor the Bible. y seguir la Biblia. So the first time ever people elected their own representatives. Por primera vez en la historia las personas um, elegían a su representante. And this was called a Burgess. Let's use the word Burgess. Y, y esto se llamaba Burgess. This is where we get the word borough from. De aquí tenemos la palabra en inglés uh, que se llama borough. They elected 22 borough representatives. Escogieron a 22 borough uh, para la candidatura. Because there was 11 boroughs. Porque habían 11. And what did Yeshua say? Send them out two by two. Y qué el Señor dijo? Mándalos en par. Okay. And where did they meet? Y dónde se encontraban? Where did this first government meet? Dónde este primer gobierno se encontraba? In the church choir loft. En, In the church. En la iglesia. Okay. Now, I think this should be translated. I'm going to read you what they wrote for their leaders. Voy a leerte lo que ellos escribieron para su líder. Before as much as men affair do little, little prosper where God's service is neglected. They can't neglect God's service. Is it up there? Uh, okay. Pero por cuanto los asuntos de los hombres prosperaron, poco cuando se descuida el servicio de Dios. Okay. And before they started their government meeting. Y antes que ellos empezaron sus juntas. They had prayer. Tenían or uh, oración. And worship. Y alabanza. Imagine if our government were doing that today. Hmm. Imagínense si nuestro gobierno de hoy hiciera eso. And Mr. His name was Mr. Buck, the man who was in charge of this government. Y el hombre encargado de este gobierno se llamaba el señor Buck. He asked God to sanctify their meeting. Y, y le pedían al señor que santificara su reunión. So that their plantation would be prosperous. Para que su plantación fuera uh, próspera. Now, these men had to fit a certain criteria to become their leaders. Esos, esos hombres tendrían que eh, eh, tener estas, que se requerían tener estas calificaciones to become a leader you had to fit certain criteria para ser un líder tenías que tener estos ciertos requerimientos o calificaciones what kind of criteria do you think they should meet yeah. what kind of gov if we had a, to do this with our government today si tuviéramos que hacer con nuestros gobiernos esto el día de hoy where would we find what our government officials need to what criteria do they need to meet qué, qué requerimientos ellos tendrían que tener hold your place there and turn to exodus Chapter 18, verse 21. allí y vámonos a Éxodos 18, 21. Let's see what criteria our leaders should have to meet today. Vamos a ver qué categoría o qué requerimientos nuestros líderes tendrían que tener el día de hoy. Everybody getting a good history lesson? Welcome to Beth Goyen. Exodus 18, verse 21. Éxodos capítulo 18, versículo 21. Imagine if our government officials had to meet these criteria. 
Imagínese si nuestro gobierno el actual tendría, eh, tendría estos requerimientos. But your first government had to meet this criteria. Que nuestro primer gobierno ten, tuviera esos uh, requerimientos. But you should choose from among all the people competent men who are God-fearing, honest and incorruptible to be their leaders in charge of thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. Amen. Does any of our government officials meet this criteria today? Absolutely not. Alguno de nuestro gobierno eh, eh, se encontramos estas um, esa descripción que tendrían que tener. I want to say our lieutenant governor. Quería, quisiera yo decir nuestro nuestro aguacil. But he doesn't keep the Shabbat. Pero él no guarda el sábado. He doesn't keep kosher. No guarda la ley kosher. So is he God fearing? Entonces es él, él un, un hombre temeroso del Señor? No. No. Because you're God fearing, you follow God's commandments. Porque si eres un hombre temeroso del Señor, pues uh, guarda sus mandamientos. Now we got a, a Jew who keeps the Sabbath as the new Pennsylvania governor. Bueno, tenemos a un judío que que guarda el, eh, la ley del sábado a uh, del gobernador de Pensilvania. But he's a Democrat. <laughs> Pero es un demócrata. So he kills babies, but he keeps his Shabbat. Él hace, él, eh, está con el aborto, pero guarda el sábado. You got a Jew, Fetterman, who beat a Muslim in Pennsylvania. How, a Jew named Fetterman. Hay un judío que se llama Fetterman. Who beat Dr. Oz, who's a Muslim. Que le ganó a Dr. Oz, que es un musulmán. But Fetterman can't make sentences. Pero Fetterman no puede hacer oraciones. So you got Jews being elected to office. Entonces uh, vemos aquí judíos siendo um, puestos en oficinas. But how honest can you be if you kill babies? ¿Qué honesto tú puedes ser si tú estás a favor con el aborto? Okay, so let's look at verse 21 again. Vamos a ver el verso 21 otra vez. Because we're talking about the very first government in 1619. Porque estamos hablando del primer gobierno en mil, en los 1600 1619. Vamos a mirar qué requerimientos tenían que tener. But you should choose from among all the people, competent men who are God-fearing, honest and incorruptible to be their leaders in charge of thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. Amen. So the leaders of this government in 1619. So, los líderes de este gobierno en los, en los años 1619 had to be God fearing, tenían que ser temerosos del Señor, honest, honestos, incorruptible, incorruptibles. So that means they couldn't take bribes. No podían tener soborno. They had to keep Torah. Tenían que guardar la Torah. Now in Massachusetts, ahora en Massachusetts, that next year, el próximo año, remember in 1607 they they dedicated the land to God. ¿Se recuerdan que en, los, en, en el próximo año, en los 1607? En 1607. En los 1607. No era un, un área de negocio, sino era un área de comunismo. Now, be, before they got off the Mayflower, what did they do? Antes de ellos salir del, del bote llamado Mayflower, ¿o qué hicieron? They dedicated the land of Messiah, Yeshua, and to the Father. Dedicaron esas tierras de a Yeshua. And they made the American Covenant, right? Y hicieron el Pacto Americano. And on Plymouth Rock, which is now known as the state of Massachusetts. In Plymouth Rock, ahora llamado Massachusetts. What happened on Tuesday in Massachusetts? ¿Qué pasó en Marte? Oh, ¿Qué Ma pasó en Martes en Massachusetts? The state of Massachusetts made history on Election Day this year. El estado de Massachusetts y su historia en las elecciones. They became the first state in America. Ellos eh, fueron los primer estado en, en Norteamérica to elect a lesbian governor. De, de seleccionar a la primera a gobernante lesbiana. So what does God think about homosexuality? ¿Qué es lo que el Señor piensa de la homosexualidad? What does Leviticus 18 verse 22 say? ¿Qué es lo que dice Levíticos 18 22. And what does Romans chapter 1 say? ¿Y qué es lo que dice Romanos 1? God calls it an abomination. El Señor lo llama una abominación. So now, Massachusetts, which was a state dedicated to God, y ahora, 
como vimos que Massachusetts era un estado dedicado al Señor, has now become an abomination to the God of the universe. Ahora uh, ha sido una abominación para el Señor. Now let's go to, back to the Gospel of Matthew. Vámonos de vuelta al Evangelio de Mateo. Anybody seeing anything major going on here? ¿Alguien de ustedes están viendo lo que estoy viendo? You still want to get to the rest of the message? I've got a couple more pages left. Matthew chapter 12, verse 25, please. Mateo 12, 25, por favor. However, knowing what they were thinking, Yeshua said to them, every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined. And every city or household divided against itself will not survive. Amen. Are we hearing those words ring out in our, our midst today? Estamos escuchando bien esas palabras. We'll see Yeshua's words are very and extremely important. Las palabras del Señor son extremadamente importantes. The evil one has been working a long time to destroy this nation. Eh, el mal está trabajando muy uh, duramente para destruir esta nación. Now, where did our second president come from? Can you repeat that? When, where did our second president come from? ¿De dónde vino nuestro segundo presidente? What state did he come from? ¿Qué estado él vino? Massachusetts. De Massachusetts. John Adams was from Massachusetts. John Adams, el segundo presidente de América, era de Massachusetts. He's the second president. John Adams, is, at least that's what the... All right, he's second or third president, but he came from Massachusetts. Bueno, era el segundo o el tercero presidente de, de América, pero él venía de Massachusetts. What did John Adams write to the people? Que fue lo que... Wrote. Wrote to the people. Que fue lo que John Adams escribió a las personas. The president said... El presidente dijo, Our constitution nuestra constitución was only made for a moral and religious people. Fue so hecha para personas religiosas y con moral. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. Eh, It is wholly inadequate. It, you es, can't govern any other type of people. Que no puede ser gobernada por otra, otro tipo de personas. So when the people don't follow the Bible or the Torah anymore, cuando las personas ya no siguen la Biblia o la Torah más, look at verse 25 one more time. Miren el verso 25 otra vez. However, know what they were thinking. Yeshua said to them, every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and every city or household divided against itself will not survive. Amen. So what do you think is going to happen to us? Ahora, ¿quién creen ustedes que, va a pasar, que nos va a pasar? So when people don't follow the Bible or the Torah anymore, Cuando las personas ya no siguen la Torah o la Biblia más, Yeshua says every kingdom divided itself will be ruined. Eh, Yeshua dice que un, un reino siendo dividido del mismo va now, a ser ruinas. Now we just went through the midterm elections, right? Ahora ya nos fuimos a de eso de las elecciones, ¿verdad? Where there was much evil that happened, correct? De lo que mucha maldad que pasó. We need to ask how did this happen? How, how did that all happen? Pregúntate, o hace la pregunta, ¿cómo todo esto pasó? How did we elect people ¿Cómo seleccionamos a personas that don't fit the mold of the 1619 Virginia? Que no están en la categoría um, de los 1619 en Virginia. How could anybody elect ¿Cómo alguien seleccionaría a political party a un partido político who can justify killing babies. que justifica el asesinar a bebés. How did they get anybody elected? ¿Cómo es que ellos seleccionan a, a, a personas? Well, if they're, if they're willing to kill babies, si están dispuestos a asesinar o matar a niños, lying, mentir, cheating, engañar, and stealing is nothing to them. y robar no es nada para ellos. What about the people? ¿Qué tal las personas? Because that's the leadership. Um, ah, That's the leadership. Porque ese es el liderazgo. What about the people? ¿Qué tal, qué, qué tal las personas? You know, because the, the, they're, they're saying they, they, the Democrats say abortion is okay. Porque los demócratas están diciendo que el aborto está bien. Well, maybe the people will go against that. Bueno, tal vez las personas habrá unas en contra de eso. Maybe the people will vote to save the baby's lives. Tal vez las personas votarían para salvar la vida de los bebés. In the state of Montana, en el estado de Montana, the Born Alive Infant Protection Act was defeated. Uh, They la, voted to allow mur murder of a baby born alive to be killed. Uh, votaron para que la um, votaron en una ley de que 
cuando can you say that again? In Montana, in Montana, they voted votaron to be to allow abortion to keep happening even if the baby is born alive. Que votaron para que el aborto siga pasando eh, y también para que si el bebé ya haya nacido. In Kentucky, they did the same thing. Y en el estado de Kentucky hicieron lo mismo. In Michigan, they did the same thing. En, mi, en el estado de Michigan hicieron lo mismo. In California, they did the same thing. En California, en el estado de California hizo lo mismo. In Vermont, they did the same thing. En el estado de Vermont hicieron lo mismo. What do you think God's going to do to us? ¿Qué creen ustedes que el Señor nos va a hacer a nosotros? Now, what, ha, what, ha, what has happened lo que está pasando is something called the fifth column. Es llamado el quinto, la fifth. quinta columna. Okay. What the fifth column is. La, lo que es la quinta columna. Is what they do is they tear you apart from the inside. Lo que pasa es que te arrancan de adentro. There was a war. Hay una guerra. And four columns of military people were coming openly to, to attack a city. Y cuatro uh, militares de cada columna venían a atacar a, a, a una ciudad and the military wasn't afraid y el, mil, y, la, y el militar no tenía miedo because they already put their own people inside the city porque ellos mismos pusieron a sus propias gentes adentro de esas ciudades so four columns of military were coming at this city entonces cuatro columnas de los militares venían hacia una ciudad but they already knew that their people were inside the city the fifth column pero ya sabían que había gente eh, eh, en esa ciudad que hacía el quinta, la quinta columna. So when they got close, Entonces cuando se acercaban, those people inside the city rose up and started to fight from the inside. It, oh, it's like Troy. Uh, not the horse. Uh, sorry. <laughs> venían y lo que pasaba es que esas, esa quinta columna venía y empezaban a pelear de adentro. It's like the Trojan horse. Era but, como el caballo Troy. But this isn't. This is the people inside. Pero esas eran las personas adentro. Okay, so that's called the fifth column. Se llamaba la quinta columna. Now this started over 2,000 years ago. Eso empezó como hace 2,000 años. Does everybody remember a historical person named Alexander the Great? Yes. Eh, ¿Alguien de aquí se acuerda a este um, a, a Alexander el Grandioso? Well, his father started the fifth column. Bueno, su padre de él empezó lo que se llama la quinta columna. His father was a politician in the Greek city of Philippi. Eh, su padre era un, un, his father was a what? Was un a, político. Was a politician in the city of Philippi. En la ciudad de Philippi. Okay. And he bribed the citizens with gold. Y él le sobornó a esa ciudad con oro. To betray their city. A que traicionaran a su ciudad. Oh, we'll give you a new television. Oh, te damos una nueva televisión. We'll give you money to stay home. Te damos... Te damos uh, dinero para que te quedes en casa. Okay, don't worry, we're getting to this, everybody. We're going to get to the 1619. Oh, there's so much information. Just see my notes. Hay uh, demasiada información. Deberían ver mis notas. I had like 60 pages of notes. Tenía yo como 60 páginas de puras notas. But what this, what Alexander's the great father did, it's called the fifth column. Pero lo que el papá de 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 Alexander el grandioso hizo que inventó la nueva, lo que se llama la nueva columna. And what that was also called, those people that betrayed their city. Y también lo que se llamaban a esas personas que traicionaron a su ciudad. What is, what Alexander the Great's father called those people. Lo que llamó el papá de uh, Alexander el Grandioso a esas personas. Here's something to write in your notes, what those people were called. Esas algo aquí, dan, 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 algo aquí para sus notas para que lo escriban. He called them useful idiots. Los llamaba idiotas sin uso because they don't know what they're doing porque no sabían lo que estaban haciendo so the government gives you this 85 inch television so el gobierno te da a ti esta televisión de 85 pulgadas but during the winter you're going to freeze to death because they're going to turn the power off pero en invierno te vas a morir de frío porque van a apagar la electricidad but you trusted in the, those government officials pero tú confías en estos en estos gobiernos oficiales o oficiales de gobierno. So this all started over 2000 years ago. Entonces todo esto empezó hace unos 2000 años atrás. With the useful idiots. Con estos uh, uh, con estos idiotas uh, que se podían usar. So now we come to our country. Entonces ahora nos venimos de vuelta a nuestro país. What made our country great? 
¿Qué es lo que hizo este país grandioso? Because we were founded on the Bible. Porque éramos um, encontrados en la Biblia. But the church says we're not under the law anymore. Pero la, pero la iglesia dice que no estamos bajo la ley más. Here's another thing for your notes. Hay otra cosa aquí para tus notas. Does everybody remember the, the British leader Winston Churchill? ¿Alguien se acuerda aquí de, de este um, líder británico? What was the name? Winston Churchill. Winston. 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 Churchill. Churchill. Okay. Winston. He, he was in Missouri. Él estaba en el estado de Missouri. On March 5th, 1946. En mar, marzo 15. 5, 5, 1946. 1946. Marzo uh, 46. And he said about the fifth column. Y él dijo de la, en la, de la quinta columna. He said these fifth column people. Esas personas de esta quinta columna. Present a challenge and peril to the Christian civilization. Eh, fueron como una amenaza a la civilización cristiana. So what they want to do is tear apart the Bible. So lo que querían hacer era um, destruir la Biblia. Remove it from our society. A quitarla de nuestra sociedad. So no adherence to the Bible. So no. Si nadie escuchaba de la Biblia. Then we're going to have no civilization. Entonces no había civilización. We had another great leader. Uh, había otro uh, un líder grandioso. Somebody, some people think he was a great leader called FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Uh, algunas so personas, that's why I said some people. Algunas personas creían que era un gran, un gran, gran uh, líder y era um, Franklin Roosevelt. Franklin Delano, Franklin Roosevelt. Franklin Roosevelt. He said something in May of 1940. Él dijo algo en 1940. He realized that we had the fifth column here in the U.S. Él se dio cuenta que teníamos esta quinta columna aquí en los Estados Unidos. He said people were coming to visit America supposedly being our friends. Eh, venía, había personas viniendo a Estados Unidos diciendo que eran amigos de Estados Unidos. So we, these people were coming to America but they really were enemies of America. Y esas personas viniendo en América pero realmente eran enemigos de América. Now let's bring it to a little closer to our years. Ahora vamos a traerlo un poco más cerca a nuestro año. In 2016 we had a president named Barack Hussein Obama. En el 2016 tuvimos un presidente que se llamaba um, um, Barack Hussein Obama. Now remember Roosevelt said in 1940 people were coming here to kill us from the inside. Acuérdense de los que le acabo de decir que había uh, personas viniendo en el año 1940. In, nine, in 2016, eh, en el, the year 2016, en el 2016, Obama said one of the goals of his presidency uh, una clave de su presidencia, Obama dijo esto, was to make the United States more diverse, era hacer a Estados Unidos más diverso, less racist, menos racismo, less Islamic phobic, Islamophobic. Menos uh, con estas um, Obama fobias o uh, fo fobias uh, islámicas. So during President Obama's presidency, eh, durante esas presidencia de Obama, he did this fifth column type of warfare. Hizo es, eh, he did. He did. Hizo esta um, quinta columna. He gave out one million green cards to Muslims. Le dio un millón de um, green cards o tarjetas de esas verdes de que dicen que eres de aquí now what's a musulmanes. Going, now what's going on around the globe? Ahora, ¿qué es lo que está pasando alrededor del mundo? In Europe, you have to take these refugees. En Europa, tienes que, tener a es, tienes que tomar a esos refugiados. Who are these Muslims coming to Europe? Que, es, que son esos musulmanes que vienen de Europa. How do, you con how do you take control of a nation ¿Cómo tú controlas a una nación that was founded on the scriptures? Que fue fundada en las escrituras. You have to get control of the courts. Tienes que tener control absoluto en las cortes. And you remove God's word from the public space. Y remueves o quitas la palabra del Señor. So how do you do that? Uh, remueves la palabra de Dios, del Señor en público. ¿Y cómo tú haces esto? What happened in 2017? ¿Qué pasó en el 2017? On October 16, 2017. En octubre 
16, octubre 16, the year 2017, 2017, the Supreme Court ruled la Corte Suprema that the Ten Commandments cannot be displayed on public grounds. Que los diez mandamientos no puede estar en la, en la vista pública. So now you remove God's word from the public. Ahora tú quitas la palabra del Señor de pública. Now in 1963, en 1963, we had a senator from Florida. Tuvieron un senador en Flori de Florida. Telling us that the fifth column is awake and well in the United States. Que la quinta columna está uh, levantándose o despertándose bien en Estados Unidos. Repub Re Representative Herlong el representante Herlong said, how does the fifth column work here? What do you got to do? Eh, dijo, ¿cómo la quinta columna trabaja aquí? ¿Qué es lo que tienes que hacer? The first thing you have to do is discredit the Constitution until it's bad. Lo primero que tienes que hacer es discreditar la Constitución, decir como que es malo. It's old-fashioned. Que es antiguo. It doesn't apply here in the, our Our time. Que ya no aplica para nuestros tiempos. Another thing about the fifth column. Otra cosa de la quinta columna. Dis discredit the founding fathers. Uh, de, de discreditar los, uh, los patriarcas, digamos. Make them out to be slave owners. Uh, que sean um, dueños de esclavos. Say they didn't care about the common man. Que no le importaban los hombres comunes. Who was the first permanent slave owner, owner in the United States? Was he a white man or a black man? Permanent, permanent slave owner. ¿Cuál era el, el hombre um, permanente que ten, era dueño de esclavo? The first man to permanently own any slaves in the United States was a black man. El hombre que... que huh? The first person to permanently own a slave in the United States. La primera persona que... que uh, permanentemente fue dueño de un esclavo fue un negro moreno was a black man himself fue un hombre de color now what year did the fifth column really start in the United States qué año uh, la quinta columna um, em, uh, empezó oficialmente en los Estados Unidos yes he was 1963 19, en 1963 what happened the year And what happened in 1962? ¿Qué pasó en 1962? We took prayer out of the school. Quitó el poder um, orar en las escuelas. So once you take the word of God out of the public square, una vez que tú quitas o remueves la palabra del Señor en las escuelas, uh, on June 25th, 1962, en junio 25, en el 1962, We took prayer out of our public schools. él quitó la oración um, en las escuelas públicas. Less than a year later, the fifth column started to happen all over the United States. Y un año después de eso, la quinta columna pasó eh, um, en todos Estados Unidos. What does the fifth column want to do? ¿Qué es lo que la quinta columna quiere hacer? Their first goal is to control the school system. El primer objetivo de ellos es controlar la, el sistema de escuela pública. Has that happened? Yeah. ¿Eso ha pasado? To sí. teach their socialism. De enseñar a uh, su sociali socialismo. Is this happening? ¿Eso está pasando? What else happened during the Obama years? ¿Qué más pasó en la era de Obama? He promoted something called the 1619 Project. El promo, Welcome to Beth Coyne. El promo, promo, fue, estuvo promoviendo eh, 16-19 project. El proyecto llamado 1619. Saying those people in, that we just learned about. Eh, de que se trata de esas personas que acabamos de aprender de ellos. Were not God fearing. Que no eran temerosos del Señor. Were not honest. Que no eran honestos. They were slave owners que eran uh, dueños de esclavos. So you might want to blame the British, not the Americans. Tal vez quieras echar la culpa a los británicos y no a los americanos. Because in 1619 there was no America. Que en los 1619 no había Ameri no, América todavía. So 
Those who don't study history are doomed to repeat it. Aquellos que no estudian la historia pueden repetirlo. Because in 1619 these were God-fearing men, right? Porque en los 1619 eran hombres temerosos. But Obama, the Muslim, said that they were not God-fearing men. Pero Obama, el musulmán, dijo que no eran hombres temerosos. The next temerosos. thing that they wanted to control was the teachers association. La próxima cosa que quieren controlar es la asociación de maestros. How did the American school system start? Como la, 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 eh, el sistema educativo en América empezó. Harvard and Yale, the two most prominent colleges. Uh, Harvard, Harvard, Harvard and Yale. And Yale. The two most prominent colleges. Los dos uh, más uh, inteligentes. Uh, mass intelligence, yes. Las instituciones más inteligentes o prominentes. They were Christian colleges. Eran colegios cristianos. Now, the teachers in there, you can't even mention the Word of God. So next, what you do is you get hold of the textbooks. Ahora, ¿qué haces después? Pues, uh, agarra los, los, los libros. And you replace the history with your own form of history. Y re, reemplazas la historia verdadera con la nueva historia. Another goal of the fifth column is this. Uh, ahora otro objetivo de la quinta columna es esta. Infiltrate the press. Infiltrar a la prensa. Have they done that? No han hecho esto ya. Infiltrate the newspapers. Infiltrar a los periódicos. Infiltrate every policy making person. Every government official. Every uh, todo todo gobierno. Make them godless. Hacerlos uh, que no tengan al Señor. In 1963, en el 1963, they took over the televisions. Eh, tomaron uh, de la televisión, se hicieron dueños de la televisión. They, they took over the radio. Tomaron la radio. They took over the TV. Tomaron la televisión. They took over the motion pictures. Uh, tomaron de esos, se adueñaron de las fotos. Who owns Hollywood today? ¿Quién es dueño de Hollywood el día de hoy? The communists. Los comunista. Now another thing they did. Otra cosa que hicieron. Oh, look at how thorough they are. Break down the standards of morality. Romper el estándar o pensamiento de moralidad. Promote pornography. Promover pornografía. Obscenity in books and magazines. Eh, cosas obscenas y revistas obscenas. Here's a, a headline from April of 2021. Pornography in schools, teachers suffering in fearful silence. Pornography in schools, Pornografía en escuela. teachers suffering in fearful silence. Eh, la maestra temiendo en silencio. What do we have happening now? ¿Qué es lo que tenemos que está pasando There's ahora? pornography in every public school promoted by the school. Promoviendo uh, pornografía eh, por de la escuela. Now, when did pornography become mainstream? ¿Cuándo es que la pornografía fue uh, pasada pasada a um, live stream? Es como mainstream. Mainstream como the main part of the society. Como lo, la prima la lo principal de la sociedad. In 1981. En 1981. What happened in 1981? ¿Qué pasó en 1981? Pornography went main went mainstream. Que es eh, la pornografía se puso muy común pues. With a movie called Debbie Does Dallas. Con una película llamada Debbie Does Dallas. It became the first openly pornography movie. Uh, fue la primera película pornográfica. So it only took from 1963 to 1981 to achieve their goal. Uh, tomó de 1962 a 1981 para ellos hacer lo que querían hacer. Another goal of the fifth column. Otro, um, otra cosa que quieren hacer la quinta columna. Is get control of big business. Es en el control de negocios grandes. How do you do that? ¿Cómo haces esto? You do it through the United Nations. 
lo haces por la medio de las Naciones Unidas. You can't trade unless you are green. Uh, no puedes intercambiar al menos que tú no seas uh, uh, yeah, green es como like, yeah, como que sea abierto o estás de acuerdo. Promote getting loans from the government and the government will forgive your loans. Tomar uh, uh, um, un préstamo del gobierno y tú y vas a ser perdonado de este préstamo. All right, let's go back to scripture. Vamos de vuelta a las escrituras. Turn to Matthew 12. Uh, vámonos. Uy. Ma verse 25 again. Mateo 12, 25. Can you take another 15 more minutes of this interesting lesson? Boring, isn't it? Once you know the plan, Una vez que conozcas el plan, you know how to stop it. Sabes cómo detenerlo. Matthew 12, verse 25, how are knowing that they were think what they were thinking, Yeshua said to them, every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and every city or household divided against itself will not stand. Amen? Amen. How do you stop this? ¿Cómo tú detienes esto? How do you stop it from being divided? ¿Cómo tú detienes de ser dividido? There are two scriptures we're going to look at how to stop it. Vamos a ver dos escrituras que te dicen cómo pararlo. How do you stop this decay? ¿Cómo tú paras esta deficiencia? Turn to the Genesis 18 again. Vámonos a Génesis 18 otra vez. Genesis 18. Génesis 18. We're going to look at verse 22 to 33. Verso uh, 20, 22 al 33. How do you stop it? ¿Cómo lo paras? We're going to look at a conversation between God and his chosen one Abraham. Vamos a ver la conversación entre a el elegido Abraham y el Señor. I tell you we were going to go deep into history and history today. No les dije yo que íbamos a profundizarnos en la historia el día de hoy. Genesis 18 verse 22 to 33. The men turned away from there and went towards Sodom. But Abraham remained standing before Jehovah. Abraham appro approached and said, Will you actually sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Maybe there are 50 righteous people in the city. Will you actually sweep the place away and not forgive it for the sake of the 50 righteous who are there? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to kill the righteous along with the wicked, so that the righteous and the wicked are treated alike. Far be it from you. Shouldn't, you judge the, shouldn't the judge of all the earth do what is just? He always said, if I find in Saddam 50 who are righteous, then I'll forgive the whole place for their sake. Abraham answered, Here now I who am but dust and ashes have taken it upon myself to speak to Jehovah. But if there were five less than 50 righteous, he said, I won't destroy it if I find 45 there. He spoke to me yet again, What if the 40 are found there, he said, for the sake of the 40 I won't do it. He said, I hope Jehovah won't be angry if I speak. What if 30 are found there? He said, I won't do it if I find 30 there. He said, here now, I've taken upon myself to speak to Jehovah. What if 20 are found there? He said, for the sake of the 20, I won't destroy it. He said, I hope Jehovah won't be angry if I speak just once more. What if 10 are found there? He said, for the sake of the 10, I won't destroy it. Jehovah went on his way as soon as he had finished speaking to Abraham. And Abraham returned to his place. Amen. Let's go back to verse 26. Vámonos de vuelta al verso 26. Verse 26. Verso 26. Jehovah said, if I find in Saddam 50 who are righteous, then I'll forgive the whole place for their sake. Amen. What's so important about that verse? ¿Qué es tan importante en ese verso? Now, at the end of the conversation, al final de la conversación, Abraham got down to 10 people. Abraham logró bajar hasta 10 personas. Verse 26, for their sake. En verso 26 dice, por, por su, por, uh, por ellos. For their sake. Por ellos. He doesn't need those 10 to be from the same family. Eh, esos diez no necesitan ser de la misma familia. He doesn't need those 10 to be men. Esos diez no, no, no dice ahí que se tienen que ser hombres. Look at verse 26 again, it's very important. 
Miren el verso 26 otra vez, muy importante. Jehovah said, if I find in Saddam 50 who are righteous, and I will forgive the whole place for their sake. Amen. In the whole place. En toda la tierra. He doesn't need them to be righteous from the same family. No necesita ser de la misma familia. He doesn't need them only to be men. No necesitan ser solamente hombre. He just said they have to be righteous. Tienen que ser justos. Dice. Can a woman be righteous? Que yes. una mujer puede ser justa? Can a man be righteous? Un hombre puede ser justo? Can teenagers be righteous? Absolutely not. <laughs> That was great. <laughs> you <laughs> couldn't have fun. <laughs> I wish I had a camera. I do have a camera. That was great. They don't have to be from the same family, everybody. No tiene que ser de la misma familia. They don't even need to have to be just men. No necesitan ser solamente hombres. How many Jews were on the planet when, when this conversation occurred? ¿Cuántas per ¿Cuántos judíos estaban cuando esta estaba pasando esa conversación? One. One. Only Abraham. Uno, Abraham. Because Yitzhak had not been born yet. Porque Isaac todavía no había nacido. It was going to be after he destroyed those cities. Y va a ser después que destruyera esas dos ciudades. He just needs 10. Solamente necesita 10. He doesn't even need them to be Jews or Hebrews. Y tampoco necesita ser uh, um, hebreos. Now we'll go to our final scripture. Nuestra escritura final. Turn to 2 Chronicles 7. Segunda de Crónicas de 7. Segunda Crónicas capítulo 7, verso 14. 2 Chronicles 7, verse 14. Segunda de Crónicas capítulo 7, verso 14. You can make it a little warmer in here now. Make it 73. I was just like dying. The humidity was in here. Well, it won't be humid tomorrow. It's going to be cold. It was snowing in Missouri when we came here. It's dropping 20 degrees. Second Chronicles 7, verse 14. Then, if my people who bear my name, will humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their evil ways. I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin. Amen? Amen. There's something very important about what we just read. Hay algo muy importante de lo que acabamos de leer. He's talking about prayer. Está hablando de oración. But it says in Proverbs 28, verse 9. Pero dice en, Pro en Proverbios Uh, 28, que si la persona no sigue la Torah hasta sus oraciones son abominables so the way we stop this, la manera en que para, paramos esto or the way for you to be saved, o la manera uh, para que tú seas salvo is coming. porque el castigo viene we saw from Deuteronomy, lo vimos en Deuteronomio Chapter 12, verse 31. Uh, capítulo 12, versículo 31. That God destroys Gentile nations. Que el Señor destruye a, a las naciones gentiles. We saw from history. Vimos de la historia. That the Aztecs and Mayans are not here any longer. Que los Aztecas y los Mayas ya no están aquí. We saw from history. Vimos de la historia. Nine other nations of Indians are not here any longer. Otras nueve uh, naciones de nativos indígenas ya no se encuentran aquí. We saw from history, Vimos la historia Gentiles who use, who use the holy objects from the temple, de, de gentiles que usaron las vasijas santas del templo God chastised those gentiles el Señor los castigó a esos gentiles with another gentile nation. con otra nación gentil. We've seen from history, Vimos la historia que esta nación fue dedicada no una vez, sino dos veces a Dios. Que esa, que esa tierra fue dedicada al Señor no una pero dos veces We've seen from history, vemos de la historia that God removes bad people from this planet. que el Señor uh, borra o, o, o um, de, la, de la faz de la tierra a esas personas Here's a question. hay una pregunta When all of Israel went into exile, cuando todo Israel se fue al exilio did el profeta Jeremiah have to leave the land? ¿El profeta Jeremías tuvo que irse de la tierra? ¿O oh, él se quedó? He was left behind in Israel. Bueno, él se quedó. Sure. 
So, can we survive what's coming? Entonces, uh, la pregunta sería, ¿podremos sobrevivir lo que se avecina? If my people, si mi pueblo, who are called by my name, son llamados de mi, por mi nombre, would humble themselves, se postraran, pray, orar, and seek God's face, y buscaran mi rostro, you have to turn from your evil ways. Tú tienes que uh, arrepentirte de tus caminos erróneos. Then he said, Él dijo, I will hear from heaven. Yo escucharé del cielo. This has been a plan of the enemy to destroy this nation. Este ha sido un plan del enemigo de destruir esta nación. When we don't have leaders that fear God. Cuando no tenemos líderes que son temerosos del Señor. When people don't fear God. Cuando las personas no son temerosos del Señor. When they vote to keep abortion legal. Cuando votan a favor de, de, del aborto. Do I think all those states really voted to keep abortion legal? No. Eh, pienso que todas esas personas votaron para mantener para para mantener esta ley de aborto. I no. don't think Kentucky did. Yo no creo que Kentucky lo hizo. Michigan, yes. Michigan, sí. Vermont, yes. Vermont, sí. Liberal Central up there. Porque son muy liberales ahí. California, absolutely. Uh, California, absolutamente sí. But when the place where the Bible was supposed to be respected Pero, turns. Pero cuando a las personas eh, tienen que ser como respetadas, then we got a problem. Ah, tenemos un problema. Because the people need to turn back to God. Porque las personas tienen que de irse de vuelta al Señor. And this is not just happening here in America. Y eso no solamente está pasando aquí en América. It is happening in the largest country in South America, Brazil. Está pasando en el en el país más grande de de América Sur, que es Brasil. It already happened in Venezuela. Ya pasó en Venezuela. It's happening in Argentina and Chile. Está pasando en Argentina y en Chile. It's happening all over Europe. Está pasando en toda Europa. But when God's word gets removed from the public square. Pero cuando la palabra del Señor es removida o quitada del del um, de las plazas públicas. In 2017. En el 2017, when the United States Supreme Court, cuando la la Suprema Corte de Estados Unidos, ruled that the Ten Commandments cannot be displayed on government grounds, dio el veredicto que la que la que la los diez mandamientos no pueden estar uh, en las plazas públicas, then things have been set in motion that cannot be stopped. Que algo ha pasado, sucedido con eso que no puede ser parado. One last time, verse 14. Una vez más, el verso 14. Then if my people who bear my name will humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their evil ways, I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. Amen. Amen. Humble themselves, what does that mean? Eh, tú postrarte del Señor, ¿qué significa? You got to choose to follow God's commandments. Tienes que elegir seguir los mandamientos del Señor. We have to turn back to the ancient path. Tenemos que irnos de vuelta a los caminos antiguos. We must be bold. Tenemos que ser um, firmes y directos. We must do it in spirit and in truth and be quiet. Tenemos que hacerlo en espíritu y en verdad. The evil one has been hard at work. El mal ha trabajado muy duro. While the body of Messiah has been sleeping. Cuando el cuerpo del, del Mesías ha estado durmiendo. I say to you. Te digo a ti hoy. Choose this day whom you're going to serve. Escoge hoy quién uh, quién vas a servir. Let us not end up like those other nations. Que no terminemos como esas otras naciones. Who have been erased from God's house. Que fueron borradas de la casa del Señor. Cállate. Shekhepavakasha. Silencio. Ferma la bush. Shut your mouth. Amen. Amen. Let's just bow our hearts for one moment. Inclinemos nuestro corazón por un momento. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings today. Gracias, Señor, por las bendiciones el día de hoy. If you're out there today, quiet. Si estás allá y te encuentras afuera el día de hoy. If you're out there today. Si estás afuera y te encuentras, eh, si estás and, afuera en el día de hoy, and you've never given your heart to the Lord, y nunca has dado tu vida al Señor, well, He's knocking on your heart today, él está tocando a tu corazón el día de hoy, but He will not force His way into your home, 
pero no te va a forzar a entrar eh, a tu casa Or into your spirit. o en tu espíritu. If you don't know where you're going to live a thousand years from now, si no sabes dónde te vas a encontrar en mil años en adelante, let me introduce Messiah to you. Te voy a introducir a Mesías a ti. Because he wants to build a room for you at his father's house. Porque quiere construir un cuarto en la casa de su padre para ti. And you can live there for as long as eternity lasts. Y puedes vivir ahí por por toda la eternidad. But you have to accept Messiah first. Pero tienes que aceptar a Mesías primero. If you want to accept Yeshua as your Messiah today, si quieres aceptar a Mesías el día de hoy, I'm going to lead in a short, simple prayer. Te voy a guiar en una oración simple. That you need to say. Que estás decir. And mean it in your heart. Y creerlo en tu corazón. If you want to accept Yeshua, say these words. Si quieres aceptar a Yeshua, di esas palabras. Say Yeshua. Di Yeshua. Today I believe that you're the Messiah. Hoy, el día de hoy, creo que tú eres el Mesías. I've done many wrong things. He hecho muchas cosas malas. But today I ask your forgiveness. Pero el día de hoy te pido que me perdones. I give you my life. Te doy mi vida. I ask you to wash me. Te pido que me laves. Clean me. Me limpies. Make me something new. Y me hagas algo nuevo. If you've done that for the very first time. Si has hecho la primera vez en tu vida. Then you are born again. Has nacido de nuevo. But Yeshua said this. Pero Yeshua dijo esto. If you don't profess him before man. Si tú no me profesas delante del hombre. He cannot will not profess you before his father and his angels. No podré profetizarte delante de mi padre. So if you accepted Yeshua for the very first time. Si has aceptado a Yeshua por primera vez. And you're in the sanctuary. Y te encuentras en el santuario. Just slip up your hands so we can pray with you. Levanta tu mano para orar por ti. If you're hearing this on radio, television, or internet, si estás en la, en la televisión, el radio o internet, just let us know so we can pray with you. Déjanos saber para poder orar contigo. Your name is Yeshua. Nombre Yeshua. Everybody said, Amen. 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 Panaboleka viasem laka shalom. May Yehovah bless you and keep you. May Yehovah make his face shine on you and show you his favor. May Yehovah lift up his face toward you and give you his shalom. Yehovah te bendiga y te guarde. Agor esplendecer. Yehovah su rostro sorba ti y hay de ti misericordia. Yehovah alce y ti su rostro y ponga en ti shalom. In the name of the Sar Shalom. The Prince of Peace, the Peleoets, the El Gabor, the Abiyad, the Sar Shalom, the Yehovah Rapha, the Yehovah Nisi, Yehovah Shalom, the Brit Hadashah, the Word of God. In Yeshua's name I pray and everybody said? Amen. Amen. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shalom. This is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman. I would personally like to thank you for tuning in to The Remnant's Call each and every week. You can listen to the full message on our website, bethgoyim.org. If you have drawn closer to the King of Kings, learned more about Him today, we are blessed. If you are blessed by these messages, please consider a donation to our ministry. You can go to our website, bethgoyim.org. That's B E T H. G-O-Y-I-M dot org and click on the donate button. You do not have to have a PayPal account to donate. All you need is a debit card. Once again, thank you very much for listening to The Remnants Call. If you have not taken your first steps to be born again. Just ask God's help. Remember, it's His loving grace that has come to find you. No one is worthy or able to reach God, but God can reach us, and He's reaching out to you now. Just open your heart and let Him in. His arms are open, and the blessing of salvation and eternal life are waiting for you. Don't let it wait any longer.
Ya eğer nay bana böyle ka bi kune ka isabu nay bana böyle ka ve ya semla ka shalom May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you and give you his shalom. Shalom. My name is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman, and I invite you to come to visit our congregation. If you are in the tri-state area, come out and visit with us on Shabbat. We are a congregation of Jews and Gentiles living as one in the Messiah Yeshua. BGMC is a place of true worship. The focus never wanders from the Hebraic roots of our faith. Beth Goyim is rooted in the Word of God from Bereshit through to the book of Revelation. Messiah's strong words against man-made tradition are carefully recorded in Matthew 7. That is the reason we only follow the straight-up instructions found in Scripture. Truly, the way, the truth, and the life. If you're looking for a deeper walk with Adonai, come out for our Tuesday evening Bible study called Messianic Torah Time. Come, spend the day with us on any Shabbat. We start at 11 a.m. with the sound of the ancient Hebrew shofar. Next, we offer our King praise and worship in English, Hebrew, and Spanish. After worship, we review the headlines in the previous week's news from around the globe, especially news from the Holy Land, Israel. We don't just list the news headlines as current events, but we comb through the scriptures searching for clues to understand what they mean and then to help pinpoint prophetically our current position on Adonai's clock. After digesting all that modern information, we leave the world behind as we journey with our Adonai deep into his eternal word, not with just one or two scriptures, but usually seven or more scriptures. The spiritual nourishment and the richness of his kingdom become accessible to the ones who share this special time and seek them out. The day does not end there. Because Shabbat is so special to him, there is always so much more that our king desires to share. So instead of separating and leaving, we stay together as a family for potluck lunch and an afternoon study of our king's word. We close this Shabbat together with the reading of the New Week's parasha, That's the Torah portion. Even after those blessings, many of us just can't get enough. So the members bring prepared homemade foods to share while we all enjoy an uplifting movie together. If all that information is not quite enough, you can check out our website where you will find over 200 video teachings and Biblical Holy Day studies. Under Messianic Torah Time, the Hebrew Roots button, you'll discover free studies on many, many different topics, including PowerPoint slide presentations. If Beth Goyim sounds like a place you'd love to visit, but you live outside the tri-state area, there is still a way to connect with us. We stream live on the internet on Tuesday, Thursday, and Shabbat. The website is www.bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M.org. Our phone number is 973-338-7800 or 978-2-YESHUA. That's 978, the number 2, Yeshua. Shalom.